Hello, a very good morning. It's great to have you here on Ireland Day. It's Thursday, the 16th of February. It is indeed. We've got a busy show lined up today. We'll be chatting about everything from sports washing to screen time and strange sightings. Here's what's coming up. Very exciting. The sale of Manchester United. It is imminent with prospective buyers, including Qatar and Elon Musk. <laughs> We're going to be discussing the future of the Red Devils later on. If you're a fan, get in touch. We'd love to hear from you at 0896. Or if it's an any bit, ABU, anyone but any, United. Anyone but United. But also, I love the way we just go, Qatar could buy them. Can Ireland not just go, sure, lads, let's just buy well, Manchester United. Magnia and Glazer, or Magnia Magnar. and JP McMahon. Yes. Didn't they own them before, they the used Glazers? To. Maybe they might put a bid in again. Be great. Let's just buy you and you. After a lifetime of dieting, comedian and podcaster Grace Mulvey tells us why she's vowing to turn her back on diet culture forever. Plus, he's interviewed everyone from Madonna to Paul McCartney, broadcast legend and former Big Breakfast star Johnny Vaughan chats about his new podcast which ditches celebrities for aliens. Indeed. Looking forward to that chat. You're mad for your aliens this week. No, you not really the aliens, Johnny Vaughan. Johnny Vaughan, OK, I thought you were all about the aliens. Uh, this morning, he's as happy as a pig in... Derek, where are you? Doo-doo. You hit the nail on the button there and we're in anyway, guys, following our trip to Tip yesterday. We've come up here to the Kildare Offaly border. It's a damp and drizzly one out there today. Plenty of scattered shares right across your Thursday. Uh, but we've come up here to County Kildare. We're on the uh, Kildare Offaly border because we're on a little bit of a mission here this morning. Pandemic pigs have been a problem over the last couple of years. So we're going to be highlighting their cause and hopefully finding some hoglets at home later on this morning. And guys, the reason I'm talking so low is because we've 100 150 sleeping pigs here behind me and if I wake them up they're going to squeal the house down. <laughs> so that's why I'm talking very very low here this morning. We don't want to wake the piggies. <laughs> The house down. Do you have any idea how hard that is for Derek right now? I have to be quiet. To be, to be that quiet. He's like, can't do it. Wake up, pigs. I can't Little wait to pig. see them. Be great. Thanks um, very much, yeah, Derek. Good. Uh, we'll catch up with you a little bit later on. But first, now get, let's get the news with Ashton Roach. Thanks, Tommy. Good morning. Cabinet meets today, but the government's next cost of living measures won't be revealed until after it meets again on Tuesday. Taoiseach Liv Radker said there will be no cliff edge drop in supports to households at the end of the month. He's also told TDs there's no need for a mini budget. Any official announcements won't be made for the next five days. Anything that emerges from today's meeting has to be ratified by Cabinet in full, which isn't due until next Tuesday. But with over half of all ministers expected to take part in today's subcommittee, any outcomes are almost certain to be final. Ministers have promised there will be no cliff edge to any measures, so some of the current measures will be rolled over. That may mean some of the measures like lower VAT on household energy bills being continued, lower excise on petrol and diesel, which currently reduces the price by up to 20 cent per litre, may also be continued, but not at the same rate. There's also discussion about the lower rate of VAT on hospitality services, which many ministers want to remove, raising revenue for other services. That could raise cash for another possible household energy credit or the possibility of a double payment of child benefit. Gavin Riley, Virgin Media News. In the US, one person has been killed and at least three others injured after a shooting at a shopping centre in Texas. Two suspects are being detained and authorities say there is no longer a threat to the public. Two of those injured are reported to be in a critical condition. The shopping centre where it happened is located near a Walmart where 23 people were killed in a racist attack in August of 2019. A white supremacist who murdered 10 black people in a mass shooting at a supermarket in New York State last year has been sentenced to life in prison without parole. Peyton Grandin pleaded guilty to a number of charges in November. During the sentence hearing, he had to be removed from the courtroom when a man rushed at him during a victim statement from a woman whose sister was killed in the shooting. Once the proceedings resumed, the sentence was handed down. New Zealand's Prime Minister Chris Hipkins has warned people to prepare for the likelihood of more fatalities caused by a cyclone. At least five people have been killed and there are concerns for other residents who remain unaccounted for. Cleanup and recovery efforts are underway after Cyclone Gabrielle left a devastating wake of extensive flooding, landslides and damage to homes. While the weather here in Auckland has improved in recent days, we are continuing to see impacts. Land, particularly around our western beach communities, continues to be unstable and some areas are still experiencing surface water ponding. We urge people to remain vigilant.
British police have elaborated on the specific vulnerabilities of missing woman Nicola Bully. Police in Lancashire said the mother of two in the past had suffered with some significant issues with alcohol which had resurfaced over recent months. They said they were made aware of these after speaking to Nicola's partner. She disappeared while walking her dog on January 27th. Filming on the movie Rust is expected to resume in the spring. The production in New Mexico was halted in October of 2021 after a fatal shooting on set that involved actor and producer Alec Baldwin. He was charged in connection with the shooting last month, along with the movie's weapon supervisor. And US actress Raquel Welch has died at the age of 82. She's often credited with paving the way for modern day action heroines in Hollywood films. She's widely remembered for playing a cave woman in the 1966 film One Million Years BC. The star passed away peacefully on Wednesday morning after a brief illness. For car insurance, van insurance, or home insurance, call the quote devil. Unless, of course, you've got money to burn. Thank you very much, Ger. We're coming to you here from County Kildare this morning, right down by the Offaly border, in fact. And we're on the way to meet some rescue and pandemic pigs, hopefully uh, finding them a brand new home as well. So that's all to come into the next hour here this morning. But let's take an opening look at weather together now with Owen Kelly with us on cameras this Thursday. And it's a pretty dark start out there. Plenty of patchy mist and drizzle trailing around out there this morning. Now I'm very limited in terms terms of those bright breaks as we work our way through your breakfast time in those moderate to fresh southwesterly winds. Now, right across the day, in fact, not really a great one in store. Uh, the best of the brightness out there today for the 16th of the month, really across uh, eastern, southeastern regions, parts of southern Munster as well. Elsewhere, different story for the rest of the country. Good day at Clancover once again. We're seeing showers uh, through parts of the west once again sweep across the island. So a very similar picture, a similar painting to what we saw yesterday yesterday with values there at about 11 to 14 degrees. So right across into tonight, those winds will continue to freshen uh, as they veer west, south, west. In fact, they will reach gale force. Gale force winds tonight uh, for those Atlantic coastal counties bringing with it uh, more rain. That's going to drive across the island as well tonight into tomorrow morning with values back to about 5 to 9 degrees. So that's how it's shaping up here in a damp and misty County Kildare at the moment. We'll be back again live at 7.35. For first-time drivers, young drivers, returning drivers, if you've had an open claim or have had too many penalty points. The quote devil's always got one hell of a quote. Still to come, we're going to be talking about Scotland's First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, and her departure. We're going to be discussing that and everything else making the news after the break. Welcome back. Now it's time to take a look at this morning's papers. We'll start with the Irish Times. It's headline, Sturgeon stuns UK politics with surprise resignation. The Scottish National Party is preparing for its first leadership election in almost two decades after Nicola Sturgeon stunned British politics by announcing her intention to resign yesterday as party leader and Scotland's first minister. Greens plan to block €200 Euro energy credit this summer. That's the front page of the Irish Independent. The Green Party will seek to block the introduction of a four €200 Euro electricity credit this summer in crunch talks on a new cost of living package for households. The examiner leads with homeless asylum seeker in legal fight for shelter. The paper reports an Afghan asylum seeker has taken the state to the High Court over its inability to provide him with emergency accommodation, has been told how he has been attacked, robbed and racially abused while sleeping rough. Scrap plan to let teenagers change gender is the top story on the Daily Mail. A leading medical expert has warned ministers need to listen to doctors and not allow teenagers aged under 18 to self-declare their gender without parental consent. The mirror goes with 9.95 a pint is unbelievable. Pubs and Temple Bar were slammed yesterday for serving up what must be Ireland's most expensive pints. Or is it? That's where you come in. <laughs> yeah, let us know if you're not. That's insane. Mm -hmm. The Sun's front page, €145,000 ray cut. RTE has slashed many of its biggest hosts' pay with Ray Darcy taking a whopping hit of €145,000. The star leads with dopes. Kinahan bosses who use CCTV to check cocaine factory workers weren't stealing have left 
hours of footage of the three million euro plant in operation. The Herald also leads with that same story. Double blow for Kinahan's. Gardaí struck another serious blow to the Kinahan cartel yesterday, seizing almost €3 million Euros worth of cocaine and making eight arrests in a series of targeted raids. Now, yesterday, as most people know, the First uh, Minister of Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon, announced her resignation after leading the Scottish government for over eight years. So let's take a quick look at some of her resigna resignation speech from yesterday. Since my very first moments in the job, I have believed that part of serving well would be to know almost instinctively when the time is right to make way for someone else. And when that time came, to have the courage to do so, even if to many across the country and in my party, it might feel too soon. In my head and in my heart, I know that time is now. So, of course, Nicola Sturgeon resigning yesterday as Scotland's longest serving First Minister and the first woman to hold the position. Joining us to discuss that is journalist Enda Brady. Good morning, Enda. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Good morning, Marin. Hi, Tommy. Was this just a bit of a shock? It seemed to come from nowhere, just like Jacinda Ardern a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, complete bombshell, really, if I'm honest. And I think the, the one point, really, I'd like to make about what happened yesterday was that there was no leak of this anywhere. I think modern politics, you know, social media and, and everyone's got an agenda. There was not one word of this anywhere yesterday morning. I mean, if you look back at yesterday's front pages across the UK, it was all about Keir Starmer getting tough and telling Labour left-wing people to, you know, back me or sack me or I'm leading Labour into the next election. This came as a complete bolt from the blue. And I think that's a tribute to Nicola Sturgeon, really. She ran a very, very tight political ship, really close inner circle. And the only people who knew about this this time yesterday was her immediate family. Yeah, it was a, a huge shock to us just when we came off air. Yeah. A little bit like Jacinta Ardern as well. Two female politicians who were at the top of their game, but have spoken about the intense, intensity and brutality of modern politics and talked about how we are humans as well as politicians. It's difficult for people to maybe see that and it just became a bit too much. Yeah, I think Nicola Sturgeon for me really has been the best political speaker and communicator here since Tony Blair. I've spent time around her. Everything works like clockwork. She's punctual, she's polite, she lands her message. She runs a very, very good political party in terms of getting its message across. And, and yes, not everyone liked her. Not everyone in Scotland liked her. Uh, she had a, an almost kind of cult-like following amongst supporters of Scottish independence. And the conundrum for them now must be, where does the fight for Scottish independence go from here? So where I am this morning, I'm outside Henley on Thames in Oxfordshire, where I live, and conservatives down here will be cock a hoop. They're celebrating. They feel it's a massive setback for Scottish independence. You know, the Conservative Party in England were very, very scared of Nicola Sturgeon because mm. it's a very long time since they had a communicator like her. She was a powerful orator. Like, she landed all her punches, but seemed to do it. In a, even yesterday, when she was talking about people who essentially hate her, she was very funny about it, and, and it was nice and refreshing. But some of people have been talking about controversies and whether, if that's what's going on behind the scenes, her husband, who kind of leads the actual Scottish National Party, the president of it, and whether there was a loan that he gave to them. There's also an issue with what's going on with the Gender Recognition Act uh, within Scotland and the fact that she wants to allow people to self-identify like we do here in Ireland and then also as you mentioned Scottish independence and she said well I have to go for us to actually move forward in the Scottish independence did that all lead to her leaving or was she like I'm sick of the social media harassment I think it's accumulation of factors really and you're right there have been negative headlines you know every week it was another issue and the more that the gender ID issue and all the legislation there was the trans rapist story as well, which dominated headlines. There was the financial situation with her husband, one thing after another. And it was a, you know, a slow buildup for someone who was so good at managing the message and getting the media to, to report on what she wanted to have covered. I think it's been a very, very difficult few months for her personally. She's had eight extraordinary years. And I mean, I, I did a lot of time in Scotland for Sky News covering the Bureau up there in Edinburgh. 
And when you would go to speak to Nicola Sturgeon, you really needed to be on your A game because she was such a powerful speaker, really sharp brain. Um, I must say she had great respect for Ireland and Irish people that always shone through in any of the dealings I had with her. Um, a brilliant speaker. I'll be fascinated to see what she does next. Apparently, she's going to stay as a backbencher. She's going to stay in politics. But she's sharp enough to realise that, you know, the, the torch needs to be carried on by someone younger with more energy. Um, and I would imagine she will have loads of offers from the corporate world now for people wanting her to speak because she is such a brilliant communicator. Yeah. Uh, finally, Enda, where does it sit now with the SNP and Scottish independence? Because it wasn't that long ago that they had that vote. It was very tight. You know, there was a lot of people thought that Scotland, they were going to make that, they were going to leave the UK. It looks like it's fallen backwards a little bit now with Nick and particularly with Nicola stepping away. Where does that sit? I think today, right now, you're, you're correct, Tommy, that, you know, yeah, it's, it's a backward step for one day today. But I think in terms of Scottish independence, you know, what people in the rest of the United Kingdom don't appreciate is a lot of young Scottish people are very, very angry about what they see as Scotland being dragged out of the European Union. You know, 58% of Scots voted to, to remain in the EU during the Brexit referendum. Scotland gets removed from the EU, mainly because of Boris Johnson and the Conservative Party. So there's a lot of anger up there. Scottish independence, the issue will not go away. And I think what you will find is that in the coming months, when the SNP elect a new leader, they will have someone younger, more energy, more ideas, and possibly a less divisive character. Yeah. And they just need to formulate the argument and keep going, and I'm sure they will. And Brady, Excellent. as always, a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Enda. Um, there, was a, there was a great piece by Una Mullally, actually. We should all be concerned about decent people like Nicola Sturgeon uh, leaving politics in the Irish Times. That's a very good read. But now, joining us for a look at what else is making the news this morning is Coach Caden from the Irish Examiner. Good morning, Coach. It's lovely to have you Hi, here. Coach. Great to have you with us. Let's start on the story. I think it's on the front of the Irish Independent this morning about the Greens. So the Greens want to block this next cost of living energy credit, 200 mm -hmm. euro. Yeah. Why? Well, they're blocking it going into the summer, which is typically when we use less gas and heating and all that. So it's easy to poke holes at the government, especially now when, you know, everybody is just struggling at the moment. But, you know, we really could use a cushion later on in the year. Um, you know, a lot of suppliers have said it was a mild winter, like the last one we went through, but uh, we don't know what's going to happen next winter. So we could need to postpone such, um, you know, supports like that. So the headline is quite incendiary, kind of saying, no, we don't want to give anyone any money, when in fact the Greens say that the most vulnerable families should be prioritised for support in the coming weeks. They should, we should be doing something sooner. Yeah, right. makes sense. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know. And but everybody's feeling the pinch at the minute. I mean, yep. of course, the most vulnerable. But I mean, everybody's bills have skyrocketed over the last few months. And this would this would be coming in in March, April time. Is that right? Yes. So the bills will still be there at that stage. It won't be getting too warm by then. Will well, it? we'll be getting the third energy credit then. So what they're saying is we should block a fourth one. Fourth one, fourth um, one. Okay. And not necessarily block. Like what I took from the piece was was that they were you know, maybe putting in some time to see if we needed, you know, an extra cushioning in the winter. Okay. Um, because bills aren't going to go down. You know, I spoke to Electric Ireland during the week and they said it could be up to two years before we see a decrease in energy bills. And that's because suppliers hedge energy costs about a year in advance. So they buy their wholesale supply. And even though wholesale prices have slumped a little mm -hmm. bit, or a good bit, uh, we won't see that in our bills for a while. So we could use that extra cushioning by yeah. December. Yeah, the biggest profits they've ever seen. It's funny how that's uh, how they are going to bring in the taxes on it. Yeah, it's happening, isn't it? Sure, it's just so absolutely bonkers. Happen. So, um, for uh, there is going to be another energy credit that is coming soon. That's mm -hmm. that is going to be a universal credit. Yeah, and then uh, any more cost of living measures that we can see that are going to help people who are really struggling because it's always coming up in the doll. I mean, we're going to get more insight today. So yeah. the meeting is happening today, but you know, IBEC, uh, so one of the biggest lobbying groups in the country, they have come out and said that you know cost of living supports will need to be continued this year. You know, um, the Pascal Donahue has ruled out a mini budget, um, but you know, I think you know, there will have to be some extra padding 
this mm -hmm. year. You know, prices aren't going down. Inflation has eased, but the war in Ukraine is coming up to its one year anniversary. That obviously put a lot of pressure um, on people and, and on prices and the ECB are set to hike rates again. Yeah, we'd love to hear from people yeah. at home in this 0896 111 Would you Do you think the Greens are right to maybe hold off on another energy credit until later in the year or could you do with that money right now? Let's talk about another story. Uh, Leo Varadkar alarmed at Ireland's low ownership, home ownership rates. I mean, for a guy who's been in government <laughs> for 12, 13 I years. Know, I know. And he's surprised <gasps> by this. People it can't buy houses. They don't understand. I mean, Leo, where have you been? Yeah, yeah. It kind of reminds me of, um, you know, that joke it's like I, for one, I'm shocked. But I mean, he's been in government long enough. Like, how is this? How is this alarming? Um, yeah. But, but it is alarming to think that Ireland they're in the bottom third in EU countries for home ownership. Like, yeah. bottom third is it is it's. Appalling. And we spend our whole time saying, and everyone rents on the continent. Yeah. No, no. Well, that's the that's the thing, Marin, is that you know we have a very warped idea of of home ownership yeah. in this country. Whereas mm -hmm. across the EU, renting is a lot more popular. But we are struggling with that here. We haven't gotten that, it's, we haven't reached that sweet spot yeah. where landlords can stay in the market and people aren't, yeah. you know, being charged extortionate rents for a studio apartment, you know. So, you know, we haven't reached that yet. And so home ownership across the EU, like it's 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 a muddled one because a lot of people don't own their homes in the EU, but, but we are in, still last. We're and, still yeah. in the bottom third at 70%. And also there's another report today that's saying everything the government have done in the past year has driven new house bills up by 10%. So everything that they're doing is making things and more expensive. And rents are up 13% on this time just yeah. last year. And do you know what else is up? The price of a pint. Price of a pint. What's this going on? How much is this? This so is it's the for today. Nine ninety five for a pint in I Temple know. Bar. Nine ninety five. So pretty much you're paying a tenner for a pint. Pretty much, yeah. Now it's again, it's easy to blame the pubs, but like you know, Diageo, which make Guinness, and Heineken, um, they have raised the prices for pubs so of their actual product. So Diageo raised uh, the price of a pint yeah. by twelve cent plus VAT. Um, like you know, consumers are going to have to pay for that. You know, like pubs, they have they can only do so much. Um, but yeah, well, so. it's going to cost. Like everything is costing more to make at the minute. Mm -hmm. So you would think that Diageo and Heineken probably to get the yeast. Like we're seeing that over in the Ukraine that they can't get maybe the materials to make pints as well. Everything has gone up. But I mean, yeah. to think that you can charge a tenner for a pint. Or you could go and across the road and it'll be 6.30. Like, it's just, but it is for, a temple It's for tourists, thing. though. Yeah, Do you mean is. tourists are coming into this country that are already being hit with outrageous hotel bills? And then to go and get a pint as well. I mean, where? why would you want to come? No, well, Dublin? now, Temple Bar, I think, uh, you know, we can't just blame the cost of living crisis on Temple Bar. They've always been, yeah. you know, nearly a tenner for a pint, as far as I remember, anyway. So. And also, rent rates, they are more expensive in that area. Yeah. You know, it all adds into yeah. the cost. But I just want to say a big hi to uh, Danny Duval, who did this special investigation for the mirror, who had to go around oh, and buy pints to see how expensive they were. And Danny. take a quick picture of the loving receipts your, as well. Loving Fair your play, work. They Some had to go to six jobs. places to buy pints to see how expensive they were. Fair um, play to you. Caden from The Examiner, thank you so thank much you for much. joining us. Great to have Get you with us. Get into us. Cheapest round. Yeah. Let us know. Send us a picture of it. Yeah, it's we'd love GAA to know. You know when you're working for a night in a GA club, I you're like, that's picture. so cheap. I saw a video the other day, I think it was about three or four euros. Someone's still charging. Don't know. I'll find it. You'll find it. For car insurance, van insurance, or home insurance, call the Quote Devil. Unless, of course, you've got money to burn. Thank you very much, Chair. We're live here at my lovely horse rescue down in County Kildare. We have lots of piggies coming your way <laughs> into the next hour, so do hang with us for that. Anyway, we'll take a quick look at weather. We're sleeping past 7.30 here this morning. Beginning to brighten up, actually, uh, out there here in Kildare, and in fact, uh, a little bit of mist and drizzle still trailing around, but a mainly dry but damp one on the roads out there this morning now in those moderate to far southwesterly winds. Now, right across the day, very limited in terms of bright breaks the best across southeastern southern regions elsewhere good deal of cloud cover by late evening showers kicking into parts of the west spreading once again across the island top temps of around 11 to 14 degrees and finally then tonight it looks like another wet another windy one in store especially for those atlantic coastal counties west to southwesterly winds will reach gale force tonight into tomorrow morning with values back to about four to seven degrees so that's how we're shaping up for now pigs coming your way at eight 
For first-time drivers, young drivers, returning drivers, if you've had an open claim or have had too many penalty points. The quote devil's always got one hell of a Now, with Manchester United about to be sold to the highest bidder, we take a look now at some of the options on the table. Tommy, how are the old clothes going? Any chance you'll be the one to I think come uh, up? Leeds would be more likely there to buy them point. than Man United. Uh, here to give us the latest are former Dublin footballer and podcaster Paddy Andrews and journalist Gavin Cooney. Thank you both so much for being with us this morning. Come here to me. This is fascinating because everything that's going on in the Premier League, I want E to do a reality TV show on it. It's like the Kardashians. Why are the Glazers, who are very much a hated, mm, hated yeah. figures in Manchester, why are they selling? Because people don't like them? No, I don't think. I mean, people have hated them since they've arrived in yes. 2005. So, I mean, they've never been too worried about the opinions of Manchester United fans. They seem to be selling because they feel there's no much, there's not much more money to be made out of this thing, to be honest, because uh, they were announced a couple of weeks after Liverpool were announced to um, be going up for sale. United dived in there and said, oh, I know, we might sell up as well. <laughs> so uh, obviously we'll remember the whole convulsions, convulsions around the European Super League from a couple of years ago, which the Glazers were involved in, that, mm. well, Manchester United were involved in the scheming around. So perhaps the Glazers are now looking at it and saying that was our last chance to, to add even more value to this thing. So, so let's sell asked, up and... Uh, just to put the money into perspective, yeah. as to because JP McManus and John Magner, they sold a big chunk back to the Glazers back yeah. in 2005. Talk about how much they bought the club for and how much they might be selling the club for. Mm. What are we at here, Gavin? Yeah, I think they buy it for around 250 million mm. and the asking price at the moment is 6 billion. It's insane. It's a good yeah. return. It's, it's a, a good return. It's a good return. return. Like, and they have put nothing really into no. it either, which no. is the remarkable thing. Well, they've thing. taken money out. Between, yeah. you know, um, interest payments and director's fees, they've taken over a billion out yes. since 2005. So, so Liverpool are up for sale as well. There's mm -hmm. all this talk with Manchester City at the minute and all the, the fines and whatever they might be under. But from Manchester United's point of view, like they could go for an extortion. You mentioned six billion. There's yeah. talking even up to 10 billion yeah. if there's a bidding war for this. Yeah, so who's I mean, in the running? Uh, so the, the, there's only one person on the record is saying that they want to buy the club and that's Jim Ratcliffe, who is uh, Britain's richest man. He's the, uh, the founder of the chemical company Ineos. I um, mean, know him real well. It's great. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, he, so he's confirmed there's a, a soft deadline in, in the words of the industry for tomorrow, bids yeah. tomorrow. Mm. Um, and so the, the other name that has been linked is the name of Qatar, that, they're, that the Qatari group might come in and, and buy the group. And there's some also some rumours about Elon Musk, although it's <laughs> unbelievably hard to take anything yeah. related seriously. to Musk seriously. Uh, not as credible. So, yeah. uh, we'll, Did that we'll come have to see who comes Twitter, out of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um, so if Qatar, Qatar already own PSG, don't they, at the minute? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Paris Saint-Germain. So they could potentially put in a bid to have a team in the Premier League. Because who owned Man City then? Abu yes. Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. But hold on, that means that they can't play each other, right? You Paris you saint Man and Manchester United wouldn't be allowed to play each other. You, you wouldn't think people. that, but it are, this has already happened with the Red Bull clubs, we're saying uh, Red Bull uh, Salzburg in the Champions League and Leipzig. They've okay. played each other in the Champions League. But you're not meant to be allowed. You're not meant to. And, and if this deal goes through, from what we're seeing, and like I said, we don't know for certain yet, Qatar would own arguably two of the biggest clubs in Europe playing in the biggest competition in, in the Champions League. So there, there's loads of different moral dilemmas here. That's not really front and centre. No surprise there. It's about, like football, the romance is kind of long gone out of football. It's seen as a business, as an industry, and that's why someone like Qatar is interested in buying a club of Manchester United stature. They're not doing it for... You know, they love the game. They're doing it as sports washing. And this term that has become so front and centre over the last number of years, this has been happening for years and decades. It's just become far more prevalent now. And Qatar potentially buying one of the biggest sporting franchises in the world is just the latest piece of that. And the reaction, we were chatting off air, for the majority of supporters, they don't really care. They mm. see this, like Saudi Arabia bought Newcastle only a year ago. Mm. Um, Mohammed built Sam and the human rights atrocities there and the Newcastle fans in their first home game turned up dressed as shakes. <laughs> you know, they'd won the lottery in their eyes. They don't really care where the money comes from. And they're flying in the league. And, and they're flying. <laughs> They'll probably, Newcastle will be competing to win Premier Leagues. They'll probably qualify for the Champions League in the next couple of years. That's why 
the fans don't care. That's why sports watch it. It, it does work. Well, what, it, what it exactly? Happens. Like, let's explain exactly what it is. Yeah. So it, it's happening an awful lot at the minute. It's in golf. It's it's in everything. Sports watching is just it's a marketing campaign. These yeah. entities or organisations, or in this case, a country, buys or sponsors a popular sports franchise, whether it's golf, it's Manchester United in this case. And they wash, they clean their image by being associated with a brand like Manchester United. Millions of people love them. Man United, it, football's the biggest sport in the world, the global game. Man United are one of its most famous, most storied clubs. And Qatar, by Qatar sponsoring or owning Manchester United outright, they're banking that when people think of Qatar, they're not thinking of human rights atrocities or discrimination or any of the more nefarious aspects of Qatari society. They're thinking of, oh, well, they own my favourite sports team. So, That's... so, but it is not just in football. It would not just yep. be Manchester United no, if a it's... Qatari uh, sovereign country came over, took them over. Mm. Like we're seeing it in golf, we're seeing it in Formula One, we're seeing it in all sports. But if it was to happen to Manchester United, like the Premier League aren't going to stop this, Gavin, are they? Like they, it's it's Probably into their not. right interest. I mean, they, they they did seem to try and stop the Saudi Newcastle deal for a while, and <laughs> the pressure came on from Boris Johnson and like the English political establishment. Really? Thinking, so the yeah, government even got money behind in. Well, obviously yeah. they have you know trade relations in certain uh, in certain industries with the Saudis, and Boris Johnson was just like, you know, it'd be good if this could happen. <laughs> so even though the Premier League are investigating Manchester City for exactly what could happen if Qatar. By Manchester United, the sale could still go ahead. It it could. I mean, the rules aren't robust enough there, there to stop it. Um, so look, I mean, there's there's still a long way to go in this story. It's always hard to disentangle the fact from the spin when there's different bidders ent entering. Mm. But the deadline obviously is tomorrow, and we'll what see. Fuckers, Elon Musk what, coming what, down in a Tesla. <laughs> the money at stake here. That's. That's ultimately what's going to yeah. drive this decision. Like it's six, not six billion. Like morality it, it, went out of football a long, yeah. long time ago. For it's Manchester United right. supporters out there watching this morning, what would you think? Would you be happy enough? Don't <laughs> care who's going to come in. You could buy Mbappe, you could buy whoever you want. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. 0896 111 Great to have you with us. Paddy, Paddy Andrews, of course, from the Football Pod and Gavin. Uh, Case, I get this. I got to keep you calling Gavin. Gavin, 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 Andrews. Poison, Gavin Cooney from the 42.a. Great to have you with us, guys. With him. It's because I do another with a guy called Gavin Andrews. Best Gavin part. Andrews. He's got so many jobs, does our Tommy. I come your writer and comedian behind the hilarious podcast, Bad Cap. Grace Mulvey will be joining us for a chat. Stay with us. You okay? Thanks, you okay? to have you back now from hip, uh, hypnotic gastric bands <laughs> to the latest TikTok <laughs> dieting trends. Our next guest is a comedian <laughs> podcaster who has delved into the ridiculousness of fad diets. Comedian Grace Mulvey, good morning. How are you? Can we get straight to the hypnotic... What? I, don't think I you know couldn't the, even say it. I know I the hypnotic it. brass ensemble that's like a band. What's a hypnotic gastric band? So, it, you know, like there's gastric bands and then there's hypnosis. But what if you combined... <laughs> Both of them. So basically, it's someone who just <laughs> puts you under hypnosis and makes you think you've had a gastric band. But part of the hypnosis is that they'll pretend to do surgery on you. <laughs> you're kidding as, me. As you're, but not only that, like, I remember at one point, now, I wasn't obviously quite under, because I remember being like, well, this is absolutely a hot mess express. But he, he put on a soundtrack that was like a heartbeat, so it made it sound like there was a beeping noise, and then he'd be like, scalp up. <laughs> <laughs> So you did this? Yeah, oh no, no, I already did it. I paid, I paid a lot of money to have this done because oh I thought it would like, you know. Was this did it work? I'm not, I'm, uh, no, it didn't. Did it you go back it. again? Or no, is it just a one session, off? One session. How much was it? Oh, it was like over 300 quid. This is so early <laughs> for me to be admitting <laughs> 300. Oh, well, I'm just kind of sitting there. Was this guy actually just kind of getting you to role play for an, for, for an on screen part and casualty? It, it was, and he was, was like, was I'll get a scalpel face. moment that really brought me out of him. Now because, like, excuse me, are you going to cut? Like, I was like, me open. Yeah, What's yeah. happening? Is it the most shocking then? <laughs> because, like, you basically, you're four seasons in to yeah. fad diets. Fad yeah. camp. Fad camp. Fad, which I know that now, just like, like it was obviously a like, hilarious play on fat, a fat camp. But, like, we, yeah, like, the most, you, the most crazy one we've come across. Yeah. I think the craziest diets we've come across that we haven't even tried. Because, like, me and Connor, when we came up with the idea, we were like, oh, we'll talk about diets we've tried. Because we've tried, like, so many. Who's Connor? That's Connor is my co-host. Co-host. And um, you obviously listen to the show. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's, for the, that's for the viewers. <laughs> it's it's the viewers. Day. No, but the ones that we that we haven't tried that have obviously been the craziest. One is like the Bible diet, which um, was called the Way Down Diet. And actually, HBO did a documentary on this diet, and like it kind of became like a cult. Listen. They're all sort of cultish, an awful lot of the diets, what? right? So many links we found to the way people talk about diets. It's almost like the way people talk about religion or cults. Do you know what I mean? Like that, that it's just this sort of mentality that people get involved with diets, for sure. Yeah. There's definitely a link there. We make jokes about it all the time. Because you, like yourself and your co-host, Connor, you have tried a huge amount of it. You're openly <gasps> going on fad camp, being like, we've tried a lot. Yeah, we've tried. Like, we start every episode saying, we're not health experts, but we are fad diet connoisseurs. Like, I've tried so many of them. Fad, like, diet, the diet industry has made so much money off me. So we were like, why not just talk about it? Because I feel like... A lot of people don't want to talk about diets they've tried or products they've tried because they feel really embarrassed about it. Yeah. So I think there's something about listening to two people like openly admit how many times we've been conned and like <laughs> the crazy things we've tried. Like one time Connor brought a baked potato into town on a night out because he was on the potato diet. Do you know what I mean? Like There's a potato diet. Right. Okay. <laughs> the potato diet, which to me, like as an Irish person, like as Irish people, I'm like, that's just our diet. Yeah. But the potato diet is where you for like two or three weeks, you only eat potatoes, but no oil, no butter. Like just. But you only eat potatoes? Oh, no, only potatoes, yeah. Uh, and so then he, that's why he brought a potato on a night out. Why? Was he able to have, like, could he not just have vodka? <laughs> that's made of potatoes. <laughs> yeah, listen, potatoes, we've all yeah. like, I tried workarounds all the time as well. I love the way your mind thinks. That's a beautiful way of thinking. Thank but you. Like, yeah. Are, there, yeah. are there any diets that work? Are there anything, is there any of these diets that you think, you know what, this isn't too bad? Because you've talked with, some insane ones. Uh, no. Really? <laughs> the, basically, from time and time again, from reading the research, everything that we've done, it's no, none, none, none works long term. And actually, so many diets, whatever diet, it's like tr trying to find research where they've like proven maybe over a year that it works. Uh -huh. they, there's no statistics. Do you know what I mean? There's no stats there. There up. is stats to be like the diet industry is meant to make us constantly fail because that's how they make money. Exactly. Well, the right? diet industry is like becoming worth more and more. Fair play to it. It's, it works more and more every year. Like, mm. that's not from, like, it solving any problem. It's from repeat customers. Do you know what I mean? So... How do you think people... Because, obviously, when you're talking about something like weight and diets, yeah. it can be very hard for people. You know, it's, it's triggering yeah. for an awful lot of people. So when you're, like... This is a comedy podcast. Do you have to put that front and centre or else you'll get sent vicious emails? Yeah, totally. And, like, do you know, we we always go... First of all, like, me and Connor are talking about our own experiences a lot of the time. So, like, in a way, I'm like, I'm allowed to make fun of myself. And I'm allowed... You know, like... And also, Connor's one of my best mates, so I'm allowed to make fun of him. Yeah. Um, but... It is a comedy podcast. If you want to go... There's so many amazing podcasts out there that are going to talk about eating disorders and amazingly brilliant people who've done years of research and ed ed have educated themselves. Yeah. But they'll talk about the seriousness of it. I'm not here for that. And, like, also, I find I learn a lot through comedy. Like, I, you know, what I'm, I find that, like, there's something therapeutic about listening to people joke about their experiences on diets. And, like, we don't hear it enough. And, like, I hope that by some of the people listening to me and Connor talk about it, they might feel better about themselves having done something ridiculous or paid a lot of money, and then they might actually be like, yeah, I'm not doing that again. And it, you know? it, it is something people can be quite secretive about sometimes, or oh, as God, you yeah. say, a bit cultish, where people tell, you have to try this yeah. diet, and oh, having yeah. the comedy side of it kind of takes away that stigma from it a little bit as well, which I think is only a good thing. So yeah. um, it's great to hear that you're doing it. Well, it is called The Fad Camp Podcast. Yeah. People, if you want to find it, get it on there it is. Instagram. Of oh, course, if they want most. to find you, great, <laughs> at Grace Mulvey Comedy. And you are actually, like, you're performing tonight. You're performing with Neil Delamere tonight. Deirdre Kane tomorrow night. Yeah, you're I busy, know. busy. I know. I'm just all over the place. No, She's no. all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> Flew in from London especially. Like, I know. I like the look you're so fancy. Down. You've also just given us an, an idea for something to do. There will be someone getting a hypnotic gastric band on this oh, show God, at some stage. That's a scalpel. <laughs> you know, that's <laughs> I can't believe that. I'll do the beeping noise in the back. <laughs> Please, can you, can you come back and do it for us? And We're then I'd be like, oh my God, they're flatlining. <laughs> We're not paying it. the 300 euro, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I love, like, I know, I did it. Oh, Grace right. Mulvey, an pleasure. absolute pleasure chatting to you this morning. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Lovely to have you. Thank you, Grace. Still to come this morning, we're talking toddlers and tablets and the impact screens have on young kids. We'll be back with you very shortly on Ireland AM. Beep. Beep.
You're very welcome back to Ireland M. Here's what coming, it's coming up this hour. Whether your kids love Peppa Pig or Coco Melon? Yeah. No, who was Bluey? Did, did. Bluey? Love Bluey. Bluey. Yeah. We're going to be discussing toddlers using tablets and the pros and cons to screen time. Oh, make me feel bad. No. TV and radio host Johnny Vaughan chats about an alien encounter that sparked the idea for a new podcast. Here we go, plus the third and final season of Star Trek Picard sees the whole Next Generation cast reunite. I'm incredibly excited. Don't care? No, it's got nothing to do with Top Gun. He doesn't care. Brian Lloyd reviews the series a little bit later on. Uh, meatballs are on the menu. This is a bit more my cup of tea in <laughs> yeah. the kitchen. Edward Hayden smells delish. Yeah, all set, Tommy. I've got gorgeous uh, lamb meatballs for you with a lovely couscous and a beautiful yogurt dressing. So, meatballs for breakfast. Oh, can't beat it. Can't Delicious. Beat it. Just I mean, hip, hypnotic and gastric bands, meatballs for breakfast. I mean, we were having oysters show. earlier in the week at this time. <laughs> meatballs good. sound perfect. For car insurance, van insurance, or home insurance, call the quote devil. Unless, of course, you've got money to burn. Sure, you're ahead of yourself there. It's only eight o'clock anyway. We're down here at my lovely horse rescue down in County Kildare. We've actually landed in the pig nursery here at the moment. So we're going to be chatting to some of the team here on the ground. Lots of pandemic pigs looking for brand new homes as well. So that's all to come in and around 8.35. Anyway, let's take an opening look at weather. We're slipping past eight o'clock here this morning and it's a dry and settled start. You'd be glad to hear still not a patchy mist and drizzle trailing around. But some bright spells beginning to pull through that cloud cover now in those moderate to fresh southwesterly winds. Now, right across the day, in fact, not really a great day in store out there for the 16th of the month. The best of the brightness, best of sunshine across southern and southeastern regions elsewhere. Good day of cloud cover and by late evening, we'll see a band of rain once again pull in through parts of the west and that's going to sweep across the island. So once again, another wet finish to your Thursday. Top values still holding quite mild for this time of year though at 11 to 14 degrees. Finally then tonight, it looks like another wet, another windy one in store. Those uh, west south westerly winds driving that rain across the island. And in fact, those winds reaching gale force for a time, especially off those Atlantic coastal counties. Very, very windy out there tonight for western regions, uh, western parts too, with values in and around 5 to 11 degrees. So that's how it's shaping up for now. Come back to us live in and around 8.35. For first-time drivers, young drivers, returning drivers, if you've had an open claim or have had too many penalty points. The quote devil's always got one hell of a quote. It's time now to take a look at this morning's papers. We'll start with the Irish Times. It's headline, Sturgeon stuns UK politics with surprise resignation. The Scottish National Party is preparing for its first leadership election in almost two decades after Nicola Sturgeon stunned British politics by announcing her intention to resign yesterday as party leader and Scotland's first minister. Greens plan to block €200 Euro energy credit this summer. That's the front page of the Irish Independent. The Green Party will seek to block the introduction of a fourth €200 Euro electricity credit this summer in crunch talks on a new cost of living package for households. The examiner leads with homeless asylum seeker in legal fight for shelter. The paper reports an Afghan asylum seeker has taken the state uh, to the High Court over its inability to provide him with emergency accommodation and he is told how he has been attacked, robbed and racially abused while sleeping rough. Scrap plan to let teenagers change gender is the top story on the Daily Mail. A leading medical expert has warned ministers need to listen to doctors and not allow teenagers aged under 18 to self-declare their gender without parental consent. The mirror goes with 9.95 a pint is unbelievable. Pubs and Temple Bar were slammed yesterday for serving up what must be Ireland's most expensive pints. The Sun's front page, 145,000. <laughs> Euro Raycut, RTE has slashed many of its biggest host pay, with Ray Darcy taking a whopping hit of €145,000. The star leads with dopes. Kinahan bosses who use CCTV to check cocaine factory workers weren't stealing. Guess what? They've left hours of footage of the €3 million Euro cocaine plant in operation. And the Herald also lead with that same story. Double blow for Kinnahan's. Gardaí struck another serious blow to the Kinnahan cartel yesterday, seizing almost €3 million Euros worth of cocaine and making eight arrests in a series of targeted raids. Now, we were talking also about Manchester United. 
which sickens me sometimes to talk with them. It does. You it don't enjoy it. The no. sale of Manchester United tomorrow, it looks like all bids are meant to be in. Whether that happens or not, there's talk of Jim Radcliffe, who's the UK's richest man. There's mm -hmm. also talk of a Qatari consortium coming in, taking over. And Paddy Andrews was quite clear as a Man United supporter. He was like, I don't really care as long as the money... If we want to be competitive, you see what's happened. Newcastle, they've come from nowhere. But, man, you were doing to... really well this year under Eric... Uh, Ten Hag, Hag without having all the sports washing money. They are know? doing well, but can they compete with the likes of Manchester City and the likes of PSG and the, where the big money is? And uh, we have a message in from Andrew saying, as Paddy Andrew said, the love of the game is gone. It's all about money in football now. If United want to compete with the likes of PSG Man City, they will need to have the bank balance of a Qatari consortium. It's plain and simple. I mean, it's sad. It's or else sad, we could but money just, talks. We could just enforce rules whereby it's like, lads, but they don't have, Demo, they I don't want yeah. to see Qatar buying Man United. I don't care how much they invest as owners. They'll do more damage to the club morally than their money can cover. Uh, also talking about money, we have to mention this. The front of the, the mirror this morning, 9 95 for a pint. So basically, as you said earlier, well done to Danny Duval, who went out there and <laughs> sourced the a lot of pints in Temple Bar. The most expensive, pretty much a tenner. Like, yeah. it's just insane. And we've had messages. No one can afford to go out drinking the entire night anymore. Everyone I know pre-drinks at home before heading out to the bar or a club. Something needs to be done about the price of drinks if people are to be expected to keep the economy going. Yeah, Joe, it's price gouging, lads. Nearly a tenner for a pint. Pity the person who has to go to the bar for a round of drinks in Temple Bar. Ouch. And it's getting yeah. more expensive everywhere. And I know we point to what tourists would want to come. But the fact is, the people who live here day in and day out, we can't afford to go out. And we're the ones who keep the economy going. Exactly. You know, and around be, the country. And the pubs have got a freeze on VAT at the minute as well. And they're still <laughs> pushing the prices up. So listen, 0896 111 We'd love to get your we take would. on that. If you work in the industry, you can, you know, tell us how hard it is, the pressure there. But 10 euro. Oh, listen. It's insane. Temple Bar has always been crazy. Up next, 86% of six-month-olds have access to screen devices. Hi, six-month-olds. Huge audience for us. Massive. Our biggest <laughs> audience. We're going to be discussing, we're probably at that level, <laughs> uh, whether this is a good or bad thing after the break. <laughs> He's already stern in studio <laughs> about this one. Listen, I am a parent with kids and... <laughs> I love it. Yes, probably wrong. From phones to tablets, kids are becoming more and more familiar with technology at a young age, but at what cost? To discuss the pros and cons of screen time and what children are watching, our child development expert and founder of Cogni Kids, Alwyn Moran, and parent and journalist Miriam Burke, who writes for rollercoaster.ie. Thank you both so much for being with us uh, today. This is... The, we we want to get people <laughs> opinions on this because this is tough and it is becoming it is. the parenting battle of the ages. So you have been researching this topic, Alwyn. Yeah. So what have you found regarding children and the ages at which they're getting access to tablets and what that does for their development? Yeah, so originally kind of there was no research done on younger age children below the age of two, but now they're actually starting to bring research in because a massive 86% uh, of babies aged six months have access to an iPhone or a tablet or screen device of some sort. Uh, so that's a huge kind of uh, percentage of the very early stage when their brain actually isn't fully developed at all. Um, so our brains actually don't fully develop until around the age of 21. So, you know, when they're really only just starting to get to understand what their world is like and even just how to battle with gravity and, you know, kind of um, learning the, our language and how do we speak and our facial expressions, things like that. So that's the really important kind of thing between zero to two months of age. And that's what researchers are now finding is that screens are starting to replace that where parents think or may think that, oh, if I give them access, they'll actually learn to speak at a sooner age or they'll learn to understand things or, you know, as mm. a learning device. But actually, it's on the contrary. It's stunting so development. It's, so it, it yes, is, the research is show, <clears throat> it's showing it's not working. It's, it's not a learning device for young children, no. Definitely. Under the age of two, the American Association of Pediatrics advises zero access to a screen for uh, th that age group. And then um, from two to five, <laughs> I know, from two to five, they would suggest one hour of screen time. And that would include TV or a handheld device. 
So, okay. listen, <laughs> uh, I have a five-year-old, I have a two-year-old. It might not be a learning tool, but it's a distraction tool. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Miriam, yeah. you have a young son. Is it yes. Fionn who's two? Mm -hmm. Yep. What about you as a parent? When did Fionn start maybe getting a phone or a tablet or a television to look at? Oh, my um, child has never watched TV. <laughs> okay. Well done to you. I'm just going to move here now while the lightning strikes. <laughs> no, he watched, he watched an hour of TV last night and I don't regret it, to be honest, because I needed to get things done and I also needed to sit down and scroll my own phone. Um, we kind of restricted his screen time early, like until he was one, just because we were actually able to. We didn't really need it. Mm. I don't know why, I can't even explain now. Uh, that whole year was a blur. Yeah. yeah. Um, but since then, we've allowed it because that's the world we live in. Now, we do have limits mm. and we do have boundaries and um, restrictions, but he does watch TV and he does kind of have control of what he watches. And uh, some of the shows he watches are wouldn't be my choice. But uh, yeah. I'm, I'm learning so much. <laughs> Bluey, Coco Melon, mm. Baby Shark. Bluey's the best. Okay. Yeah. The children are uh, adults love. Bluey. Yeah. Yeah. I hear a lot about Dougie and Sticky, known. Sticky, yeah. Sticky, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, Bluey is excellent. Yeah. Like, it it is. Is, as a learning oh. tool, yeah. uh, you know, it is actually yeah. quite progressive in, yeah. in the messaging and kind of hard That's hitting. It. Yeah. Um, it makes me feel bad though because the dad is this superman who does all these amazing things <laughs> yeah. and I'm le letting my children watch television. Yeah. About and, a dad doing all these things. Yeah, like that's a actually failure. something I notice as well. It's like um, we're watching Bluey, but they never seem to watch TV in Bluey at all. They're just playing yeah. with yeah. their parents and it's like, oh. But, so yeah. you let your par you let your son watch television. Yeah. My kids like it is a there's a guilt behind this album yeah. because I yeah. understand and I know that we should be restricting the children and shouldn't be doing it, but yeah. it's very difficult mm -hmm. to try and juggle two children, say for my wife who's at home on her own, yeah. to not have the telly on or to not just say, Listen, just take the tablet or my phone for five minutes so I can get something done. Yeah. Uh, oh, absolutely, um, completely is. And that's the one thing would be just to be mindful around how are you using it? What, you know, what do you need to get from your time with your child on a screen? So if it's kind of free time that you need to free up, then, you know, there are a couple of other options, like number one, depending on their age, obviously, but allow them to be bored. Like, mm -hmm. that's where creativity, actually, that's the best for the brain, mm. is where they become creative and they really start to, you know, like, we didn't have screens when we were younger, but, you know, we were allowed See, to be bored. But this is a point, because when I was younger, an awful lot of people don't have gardens, right? Yes. And when <laughs> I was younger, I went out at 8 a.m. and I came back in, like, Mam said I left when I was two years old and I came back when I was 21. And yeah. she was like, you, you were gone. And we were allowed to do that. But nowadays, yeah. we're also afraid of yes. everything. And traffic is so fast. And, and it's hard yes. to kind of go, well, they're bored in the house. And when they're bored in the house, they're roaring and having a tantrum. It's different from when we were bored, right? No, yeah, no, absolutely. But there are, you know, like you can have little kind of activity things set up. So it does take a little bit of okay. um, work, work okay. and kind of pre-planning to have a little kind of activity centres or if you've got a playroom or a play space, a little area in their room where you do toy rotation. So you don't have all the toys out all of the time. Because again, you know, that's like going into a shop and saying, what do you want? It's too much choice. So if you narrow it down, and maybe have like five key toys out available this week and then you change them. That's kind of a uh, Maria Montessori um, okay. kind mm -hmm. of method. Okay. So they have co something constantly to play with and it's a different kind of um, variety, but also not too much where that they just actually walk into a room and they're like, I don't even know where to where start. start. Like, where do I go right. with this sort of stuff? You yeah, know? It, it, it is very <laughs> interesting and it is something that as parents, we all aspire to do, mm -hmm. but it always yeah, isn't as easy as that. We, also, there's a lot of, we're talking about Bluey and the great messages it has. Yeah. There's a lot of people that are getting a bit upset about Peppa Pig, another very popular show with some of the messages it has. Let's take a quick listen and see what we think. Oh, you've got a big tummy, Daddy. Is there a baby in there? Oh, oh no, Peppa. This tummy is pure muscle. Here are my homemade cookies. But if you want to come in, you have to say the secret words. That's easy. Daddy's big tummy. That's right. <laughs> <laughs>
Or, uh, <laughs> we all just laugh. Which it is. I mean, like, Family like joke. it's meant to be fat shaming. This yeah. is that something? Yeah. Is that? Do you a worry problem? about that sort of thing, Miriam? And also that it's so funny. I know so many children in Ireland now that have English accents. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know? It's like, oh hello. <laughs> like, yeah. do you worry about things like that? About that overexposure? Are you like, lads? I just need to get the cleaning done. Do you know what? I actually don't. Um, I think because. Do you know what, I, I do get, I do get why people have a problem with that, especially the fat shaming element of it, like that's not right. But I, from my experience so far, I don't think that Fionn really takes up in it that way. Maybe older kids do, and maybe like it can translate then when they're older in the playground, seeing, oh, that mm -hmm. it's okay to comment on people's fat tummies. But it's but, your dad, like, do you know, yeah. like, it, kids, like, it's just messy, is it not? I think I grew up doing that my dad is, is that any different like is that really bad do you think I, th I think what what I suppose what they're saying now is you know like I have to confess my own children now 16 and 18 did watch Peppa Pig like intermittently when they were smaller mm. um, and you know obviously we didn't <laughs> deal with them you know like you, you then parent accordingly so you don't mm. you kind of make yeah. sure that you know you don't necessarily highlight that this is what the kids are talking about yeah, yeah, yeah. a little bit like that because there is always banter within families yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know and it's generally respectful and and kind and, and loving and it's never intended to hurt mm. um but it's really important then as you parent to make sure that when they go out into the playground or when they're dealing with others and you know kind of and with each other that you know we really just are careful about our words. Mm. Mad to think, they're a lot of work, lads. It's a lot of work. You'd have a brain, right. you'd be going, it's like you have to parent them 24-7. Get the phone out. <laughs> <laughs> we want to hear from you, of You're course. Brash. How is your life with your screens? It's obviously very different from when we grew up. Or do you have a great garden and they can go out and do whatever they want? 089-6111. You know we want to hear from you yeah. um, on this one. Alwyn Moran, who is so good to come into us, always going, Tommy's going to absolutely go <laughs> mad on this one here from Cognitive Kings. Yeah. And, um, Miriam Burke, uh, who is with the parenting website rollercoaster.ie. Thank you both so much for being with us Thank today. You. Thank you. She's going to kill him. She's going to kill him. <laughs> yeah. uh, lots more uh, coming up on Ireland Day. End. See you shortly. <laughs> <laughs>
so it's not good. But... Um, Sarah says, I appreciate Tommy's honesty about allowing his children access to screens. As a single parent of three children, I experience such guilt allowing them to watch too much TV. It's really hard to tend to all of their needs when they're hanging out of me all of the time. Sometimes the distraction is needed for their greater good. And being in that situation as a single parent with three children. Big time. And, and there is a guilt because you know that you shouldn't be letting your kids just be glued to, tele to, your, to phones and tablets and mm. whatever else. And we do try to restrict it as much as we can yeah. in our house. But there are times when you need to get something done and it is easy just stick on the telly or give them your phone or a tablet yeah. of some sort to be able to just distract them for couple of minutes. But it's really like as someone, you know, I'm minding a chill, but you know when you've got the kids by yourself, like Lucy's gone away or something, like being a single parent is like that. It's, I don't know how they do it. Maybe I it's, genuinely have no idea how single parents do it. How get anything done. Yeah. Honestly, it's it is insane. But do keep those messages coming in and let us know what you, if you have any hacks what can you do to try and distract them? What sort of shows do you like the kids doing? Because I was saying to all Don't one, give us a list of the best TV shows. <laughs> well, We're yeah. trying to be well, like, no, look at nature. My big issue is the difference is letting them watch something like a Netflix compared to like a uh, YouTube. YouTube. Because YouTube, you're watching, you could have a two or four, five-year-old watching. Yeah. And these videos pop up. And even if they're on YouTube Kids, you don't know Bad. what they're watching. Some crazy stuff CBeebies out there. CBeebies is good, isn't it? CBeebies is there, yeah, but... Um, Bring back Bosco, lads. Bring back Bosco, yeah, but they've gone past that now. They're so tech-lit, yeah. Anyway, awesome. thank you for getting in touch. We have lots more messages to get we through. Do. And about the price of pints, 9 95 they're charged in Tampa Bar. You have to go out with Tommy Bow to be able to afford that, my <laughs> God. Now, for something completely different, Derek is with his piggy pals. <laughs> and they all need homes, <laughs> by the way. So let's. this could be a distraction for the children. Derek, how's it going? Absolutely, guys. Perfect for the midterm break. And we are up to high dough. Little piggies here this morning. I have to say, we're down here at my lovely horse rescue down in County Kildare. Uh, Deborah Kenny is with us now. And Deborah, loving all the piggies here this morning. We've a lot here. Don't we? <laughs> we've, a, we've a lot here this morning. We've a lot going on here. Uh, we have morning. the nursery here behind us we as do, well. Yeah, now, yeah. pigs, you wouldn't associate them with uh, the need to be rescued, but they're in they're in a little bit of a sticky situation. Yeah, yeah, we have a sticky situation um, within Ireland between uh, pandemic pigs. We have a lot of pigs coming in. Um, in in December, we took in two lots of pigs with the Department of Ag, uh, one lot of 15 and another lot of 16, and they all came here to us. And then we had six mamas that had babies in the middle of all that um, old, ba old, old uh, mothers having babies inbred and really difficult births most uh, end up having to go to UCD and we lost a lot of babies. Lost a lot of pigs. Now, uh, yeah. in terms of the pigs, how many have you got here? 150 here. 150 yeah. and it's growing as it well. It is growing. Uh, yeah. Pigs, a lot of people uh, got them during the pandemic as well. They did, they? yeah. They got a little pig during the pandemic saying they're going to micro pig, which ends up being, it's a baby pig. It's not yeah, a, So there is no such thing as no. micro pigs. No, Let's kill this myth here. It's a baby. It's a baby. So you're getting a nice little baby piggy and then it grows, it could grow to six foot long and then they don't want them anymore because they, they grow and they have to look after them. So we've taken them out from back gardens, we've taken one from Drimna, walking around the streets. Yeah, yeah so and Blanchestown as well. Yeah. So uh, for anyone then who wants to mm. potentially rescue a pig, they need a bit of space, you don't do. they? You do. You need a bit of space, a uh, few acres. You have to come here, do a training uh, with Cathy and also you need to have a herd number and your pig needs to be tagged. And you work so very closely with the Department of we Agriculture. We do, yeah, yeah. We all of that and we're just training here with the Department of Ag as well. Yeah. All right, so we're going to just pop across here to Cathy David. Good morning to you, Cathy. You're also in piggy heaven here this morning. Uh, let's talk about the nursery here because you've got a great setup, don't you? The nursery, we had to build several farrowing stables specifically for the babies who were coming. Um, as Debbie said, the mums are really old so they don't have any muscle tone for long farrowing. So um, behind us in there, which we can't see because we've no internet. Of course, um, they, we built lovely little boxes with turnout for them. They all had to be helped to have their babies. Um, as Deb said, we lost uh, a, a number of the piglets. Um, they died already. But they're the so family. well looked after, I have to say now, and, and all the mums inside. We have lovely shots on air as well of all the little piglets. They're, they're very well looked after, aren't they? They are. They're beautiful. The mums are great. Once they were strong again, they're fantastic mums. And we'll have a lot of pigs for adoption once they're healthy and through that. Yes, yeah, so as Debbie mentioned earlier, let's talk about adopting pigs because, uh, as you said, you, you need the space at home. So it's not someone with a small back garden. You need a couple of 
acres really. Yeah, the easiest thing to do is get in touch with us, have a look at the videos we have online about fencing and enclosures, and then um, come to us for training. And then you'll know if pigs are for you. And involved, what's involved in the training then? You learn about behaviour, nutrition and environment, everything you need to do. Uh, also first aid. So we try and equip you with it, but the pigs will always be in our care, as in if anything goes wrong, we're there to help you. And Cathy, pigs are really intelligent animals. They're, they're kind of like dogs. They're on the same level, aren't they? They really, really like dogs. They love attention. They love being cuddled. They love a routine. Um, so the best thing you can provide is a routine for your animals. Same way as with dogs and horses. Piggies love that too. And, and just like dogs, I'd say piggies would eat you out of house and home as well. <laughs> they do eat an awful lot, but we get an awful lot of overweight pigs. So the right nutrition is key. Okay, okay. Well, uh, where can we find you online as well? Uh, my lovely Pig Rescue Facebook and Instagram. Across on your socials. So if you have space in your home, if you have space in your heart, I suppose, this morning, and you're looking to adopt a pig, touch base with the guys here down in County Kildare. We're surrounded by pigs. Piggy heaven here this morning. Micro pigs. <laughs> Not micro pigs. Back to you guys in studio. Oh, look at him. Hello, Sir, Piggy. Trying to find <laughs> pictures. We have two pigs at home. So we do. And uh, they're great. Right. They're characters. They rip up the garden, though, mind you, but they're very... Well, you uh, say that you think that they think that they're the dogs. They think they're dogs, yeah, because they grew up kind of like they were piglets. And I love dogs. that so much. I was waiting for Derek to bounce Lovely up to pets. the pig and start going, <laughs> Hey, Daddy Pig, are you <laughs> here? Your big belly. <laughs> <laughs> um, my lovely pig rescue, if you are in the, in the mood and you've got all of the proper things to actually rescue a pig, that would be amazing. It's break Do time that. now. Uh, but Edward Hayden is in the kitchen, not with pork, hopefully, <laughs> after the break. No pork, right? No. No, no, we're fine, we're fine. We'll talk to you shortly. <laughs> Now he's been busy sizzling his meatballs and now just needs to add some yogurt. Mouth watering. Oh my <laughs> lord. Do you mean it were Edward Hayden. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. How, morning. How, How are, are you? you doing? Great, great, thank you. Looking forward to this. Yeah, well, this is a gorgeous recipe and it's really nice. And again, it's just bringing us into that kind of spring si time with just lighter options and everything like that. So I've got gorgeous minced lamb here. And I'm just going to flavour it, just add bits and pieces to it. So first and foremost, they always will put in a little bit of salt and pepper. So pop that in. Then I'm going to put in um, some spices. Now, again, I've raided my spice rack. So when people are looking at the recipe, you know, be interchangeable with it. You know, if you don't have X, use Y. Yeah. Uh -huh. What I've got here is I've got a, a teaspoon of cumin. I've got a teaspoon of ground coriander. I've got a teaspoon of garam masala. But again, oh. think of using Chinese spice, spice. Think of using yeah. the piri piri seasoning oh, or all oh. these things that you yeah. might have. And of course, I've got the few chilli flakes yeah, well, as well. We couldn't, not here. He's not we here, couldn't, but in the whole thing. We couldn't, um, but... Tell me this, why have you got lamb mince now, not, say, uh, beef? Again, of course, you can use beef if you want. I always think lamb is gorgeous with the couscous. It's kind of reminiscent uh -huh. of that North African, Middle Eastern. Yum. But also, it's lovely at this time of the year, the nice spring lamb and all of Are that sort of have with it? Is it like I've got a... lovely couscous and I've got some yogurt dressing which I'm Yum. going to serve with it as well. Nice. So I've got some breadcrumbs which I'm going to pop in. Now that's great to soak up any of the fat that's in the meat and it'll retain all of that fat okay. and the retention of fat just gives you the retention of flavour. Is well, it your binding agent? Alone. It's a binding yeah. agent, absolutely. Get okay. you wearing <laughs> you this more often. There you um, oh. But tell me, the, is it the fat content in lamb is quite high though, is it? It is. And again, of course, I always think with meatballs or burgers or even a lasagna or a moussaka or something, the fat content is required yeah, to give you that bit taste. of flavour because yeah. if not, it can dry it out. Lovely. In there, I'm going to put, I've just put in some coriander. I've torn that in rather than chop it. I just tear it in at the last minute. I've got an egg gone in. I've got a little bit of diced red onion and then I've teamed up with uh, Irish yogurt Clonic Kilty and I'm going to put in a little bit of the natural yogurt in the mixture. Now, any sort of moisture that you put into burgers or meatballs, you've seen me doing it before, it just adds that bit of moisture. And again, as I said, it prevents them from drying out. Yeah. So right. pop on the gloves and then so I'm just going to... So would you do that instead of the egg or you need the egg with The it? egg as well. The egg, of course, as, as Moran said, the breadcrumbs binding. and the egg are the binding agent. And then the yogurt of this style is, gives you that nice bit of flavour and also the nice bit of mm. moisture. And it is that North African sort of taste. Again, of course yogurt. it is. And I'm going to serve it on top of it as well with a little bit of
bit of lime and Tabasco. So that works really nicely. So give that a really good mix up. I've just popped on the gloves. It's a kind of a hands on yes. job. Yeah. So popped on the gloves and uh, get all of that mixed around just like so. Lovely. And then I've gone to uh, mould these into little meatballs. So just give them a little um, shape with your hand and pop those onto a baking tray. How then big are you lined with now? Listen, I'm talking like a dessert spoonful of mixture, you know, but you can go as large or as small as you like. And again, of course, um, don't forget that you might decide to do it maybe as a little burger. What okay? about you, Mern? Do you prefer the big balls <laughs> now or the smaller balls? <laughs> Tell the nation. Each, each to their own. Depends, huh? depends oh, what I you're with you. into I'm asking at, you. The, at the perfect time. Do you like the big ones? You know what I mean? Most cookery um, classes would tell you it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's Depends what, what they I can say. Finish. It's all. I've got very small hands, Tommy. I'm okay. Very small Listen, hands. There you go. I have a spare I, pair of gloves. You can roll during the break, Mern. <laughs> but you can just see I popped them onto the baking tray, uh, just like that. One ninety three seven five gas mark five. About twenty minutes is what you'll be cooking those for, regardless. <laughs> Your hands. Now, for those. Uh, that's the meatballs. I'm going to roll the rest of those in a few minutes' time. Meanwhile, I'm going to make a lovely uh, dressing or lovely sauce to go on the top of those. So again, I've got some of my whole milk now natural yoghurt from uh, Irish yoghurts and then what I'm going to do is pop all of that in. I'm going to add in some tomato ketchup in there as well. Tomato? Tomato, nice. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Pop Ponce. a little bit of that in. And then I'm going to add in a bit of lime juice in there as well. Right. So again, you can see that my is nice and juicy. I gave it a little roll. I know you're familiar from the mojitos. Just yes. give it a little roll, just like I so. I did uh, lime And that yesterday. works really nicely. Um, it was hard, yeah, so exactly. Yeah, Give a, a good, good roll, OK? Um, or Mary Berry used to stick the lemons into the microwave for, like, 10 or 20 seconds. Oh, right. And that just kind of helps you. Because lemons, in particular, are quite um, firm, so it helps you just to really pull out the juice. And I you saw mine was nice and juicy. Night. That's clever. OK, into the microwave. Little drop of Tabasco sauce going in there as well. OK, and give that a nice little mix around. So it's just a little take on the kind of the Mary Rose, you know, the normal Mary Rose mm -hmm. that you might have on like a little prawn cocktail. Lovely. OK, and that works really nicely. So then what I'm going to do is I'm serving these today with uh, a couscous, but you might decide, think of having them like in a lovely pita bread, you know, put some salad leaves, put some of your lovely Mary Rose dressing, squash in some of your meatballs, or you could have flattened them out so that they're more like a kind of uh, a kofta or a kind of a flatter burger and okay. squash those in to a pit of bread. Let me just give you a wee little look at those. Yum. As I said, 190 uh, in the oven there for about um, 20 minutes. Again, of course, it does depend. If you've gone a little bit larger, you might need to go a little bit longer. <laughs> Maybe and the smaller bowl. That was distracting. Ball, you know and you'll I mean? have a quicker supper. There we there. go. Isn't that what now, it's all about? Again, of course, reminding everybody that minced products do need to be cooked right through to the centre um, because um, from a food safety point so of view. So you better kind of chop one open to just check. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Just check one. Now, a little bit of our lovely uh, couscous uh, there. And what I've done, if I can just... I've just made it in advance, but the most um, perfect thing to remember with couscous, one part couscous, two part boiling liquid. So if I've used 200 grams of couscous, 400 millilitres then of boiling water and you'll get the perfect couscous. Mm. A little bit of my lovely yoghurt dressing. And again, of course, that just enhances it really beautifully. And you see that lovely soft salmon colour that's on it as well. I'm going to put a little bit of fresh coriander. And then, of course, because it's very fancy at the minute, uh, oh, and again, oh, gives you that, that lovely sense. Look at how that lovely uh, ruby red colour just gives you the sense of resplendence uh, in the dish. A little bit of lime. And short, oh, there you have it. My That's what and you short need. of uh, short of pouring out the Chablis for you, <laughs> I can do no more. No. Ah, so and that's just a really nice little feast. Is the couscous you. cold? Is it kind of like room temperature? Uh, I've taken it out of the fridge. Okay. The couscous is cold. Yeah. So again, what you should have is summery. you should have the coolness of the um, couscous. You've got the lovely, nice hot, as in hot from the oven, but also spicy mm. lamb meatballs, and then the lovely cooling element of the uh, yogurt dressing. Let's Yum. go. Full carry on, Edward. Yummer. Your balls are delicious. Oh, well thank done. you so much, Mary. Right Your nice little They're... small balls, Edward. <laughs> They're... Just little... Thank you. There's my reputation I mean... gone, Tommy. <laughs> Alan isn't here. We had to do something. You Never know asked I mean? Tommy to, to fill something. out my Tinder account. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no, I think that we would be good, actually. That's Do you a, reckon? That's we know what you like. Point. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Edward Hayden, as always, thank you so much, my darling. He's back. actually You're gone red. You have to blush in a little small town country He's chap. He's gone red. I didn't expect that. I thought you would be in your twit because of Alan. Uh, there's lots more still to come in the next hour. Uh, best known for his uh, job presenting the big breakfast, Johnny Vaughan will be joining us for Plus, a chat. Plus, we're going to be chatting everything about the return of Jeremy Clarkson's oh, yeah. farm to Star Trek Next Generation Reunion with our TV and film reviewer, Brian Lloyd. Stay with us. Back in a minute. Coming up this hour, we are talking aliens, Ant-Man, and appropriate attire for any occasion. Well, that sounds like a great hour. Thank you to my Q QBC voice there. <laughs> He's one of the UK's best-known broadcasters, Johnny Vaughan, is going to be talking to us about alien encounters and how his own strange experience was the inspiration for his new podcast. It's movie day uh, with our lovely Brian Lloyd. And Brian, the Marvel spell might finally be broken. Uh, no. What's no? the Marvel spell now? Isn't like that, 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 that Marvel might have over. had a bad movie? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Mar yeah, so yeah, Ant Man and the Wasp Quantumania is in cinemas this week, and it's not getting great reviews, to be honest. It's a little bit over the top, it's a little bit boring. Paul Rudd, he doesn't work on blue screen, you know what I mean? Like, he needs to be kind of like with, with everybody. People. Like, look at those, like, look at those, like, um, bloopers from, like, Anchorman 2. He's hilarious. Yes. Yeah. And that's the best thing in that film. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to be talking about Ant Man and the Wasp. Quantum Mania. We're going to be talking about Picard season three, oh. and we are going to be talking about Marcel the Shell with shoes on. I got well the name. I got the you name. Did that well. I got the name. Well, well, well done. Well, well done. Look yeah. forward to that. Thank you, Brian Silas, Rob Condon. Also joined us. What else have we got to look forward to, Rob? This morning we're taking a look at occasion wear, so everything from confirmations, communions, even weddings. We're going to take in top trends for spring summer from Bow Block Brights, beautiful prints like this, and of course that one shoulder trend that is dominating the catwalk at the moment. It's all available right now at Manor Mills Shopping Centre. Bold mm. Block Brights. He block got Brights, the alliteration got note today. <laughs> well nice. done. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Now, He's had a galloping or an oinking success over at the My Lovely Horse Sanctuary, except it's the My Lovely Pig Sanctuary, I think. Derek, how are you getting on? Yeah, guys, you know what, right? We're having a great morning here with our little piggies. Uh, take a look here at uh, Teddy and Squiglet. And Debbie, what did these start out as? So they would have started out as micro pigs uh, when they first came into so us. These um, were tiny little pigs. And guys, look at the yeah. size of them now. So there is no such thing as micro pigs. If you buy a micro pig, you're not buying a micro pig. This is what you get, a fine big piggy. And they're all looking for homes as well. And they're very hungry too. <laughs> They've eaten a bowl of porridge here this morning. <laughs> here, lads, here, Squiglet, here, here, Teddy. <laughs> Okay, so that's oh, for sure. Oh, hey, that's 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 the size of them. <laughs> hey, thank you, Derek. Love that. For car insurance, van insurance, or home insurance, call the Quote Devil. Unless, of course, you've got money to burn. Yes, thank you very much. Sure, we're live here at uh, my lovely pig rescue down here in County Kildare. If you missed our piece with all these gorgeous piggies, all looking for homes, by the way, a little bit earlier on this morning, be sure to catch it uh, later on the player this uh, Thursday morning. Anyway, we'll take an opening look at weather. We're slipping past nine o'clock here at the moment. The drizzle beginning to come down here in County Kildare. Very limited in terms of that sunshine, in terms of those bright breaks now out there for the 16th of the month with a good deal of cloud cover, bearing in mind winds beginning to pick up pace to locally fresh uh, from the southwest. Now right across the day, the best of the dryness, the best of the brightness really, across southern sections of Munster to the south, these parts of eastern Leinster as well. But elsewhere a bit of a different tale we're telling because that cloud cover will extend across many areas once again, patchy light rain and drizzle extending from the west and sweeping across the island by late evening as well. So another bit of a dampener to finish out the day. Uh, top temps of around 11 to 14 degrees. Finally then tonight 
tonight. It looks like another showery one in store. And in fact, this time, uh, those winds will be uh, quite strong. In fact, gale force uh, from the west-southwest for those Atlantic coastal counties. That once again will push rain across the island. So a bit of an unsettled start, but an improving one then into tomorrow with values around 7 to 11 degrees. So that's how it's shaping up for now. We'll catch again. Back live at 9.35. For first-time drivers, young drivers, returning drivers, if you've had an open claim or have had too many penalty points. The quote devil's always got one hell of a quote. Hi, oh, yeah, you're very welcome back. Now, we were talking to Alan Moran, of course, who is a child psychologist, child, child behavioural psychologist, who was talking about screen time with children and how under the age of two, they should not be shown the television, our phones, our screens, but we know as parents to try and get some peace. I admit, we do it. We let the kids watch telly now and again. Try to limit as much as we can. But Katrina sent in a message to say, let's call a spade a spade here. Handing a device to a child under two is just plain lazy parenting. If you don't give them the option of screen time, they'll be forced to find a way to entertain themselves by playing and using their imagination. I raised two boys in a small terrace house working full time and never handed them a device. There's no excuses. Thank Fair play to you, Katrina. Good on you. I genuinely want you to come in and have a chat with us. I'd, yeah. I'd love to how. talk to you. That would be amazing. Um, Orla says, I'm all for parents giving the phone or tablet to kids in coffee shops or other public <laughs> places. Wait for this. If it means the rest of us <laughs> can actually enjoy our time out and hear ourselves think rather than screaming children, I'm all for tech for kids. <laughs> yeah, it is. There's a lot to be said for that. Today, we all want a bit of peace when we're having a coffee or a pizza with the kids. Um, we're we're also talking about uh, pints in Temple Bar at the minute. We're always talking about the prices of pints. Mm. But 9.95 is that is that the most expensive pint in Ireland? So there is a pub in Temple Bar, 9.95. Publicans and hoteliers are increasing the cost of their services on a weekly basis. This is from Fran. The same establishments are on a VAT reduction from our government. While they continue to re receive this reduction in VAT, they should freeze their prices. Ultimately, it's the customer who pays in the end and these establishments will scare away tourists then come to the government very shortly seeking further assistance only in Ireland. It's important to say that Diageo who supplies an awful lot of drinks they did raise their prices as well. 9.95 is a ridiculous amount of course for a price of a yeah, pint. Yeah, um, yeah. But, uh, and also the minimum pricing thing that the government did in off licences. Like it's all. But as Gav said the price of a pint to Guinness and his local is 5.20. So how I know this price of rents and rates but and everything else. But you see, his local and... could be a place where, you know, a worker doesn't have to pay 2,300 to try to live. Well, to he said rent. 10 euro for a pint is a joke. Well, it there is. There you have it. It absolutely is. Uh, so thank you for all of those messages this morning. We really do appreciate it. Up next, we're going to be catching up with TV and radio host Johnny Vaughan. I just love him on the big breakfast. Mm, brilliant. Oh, there he is. Look at that for a oh, bookshelf. Oh, there he is. <gasps> oh, I love a good bookshelf. We'll be talking to him. Morning, guys. Hello. Morning, Morning guys. <laughs> Johnny, will be with us in a second. Hello, you're very welcome back. Our next guest is a British broadcaster who has just released a new podcast which tells the stories of people who have had experiences with aliens. The first episode is bonkers. We're going to talk about bonkers. it in a minute. But joining us on Skype to discuss that and his amazing 30-year career. And he's also been chatting about what we were talking about, screen time with children. Good morning, Johnny Vaughan. How are you doing? Good morning to you. How are you both? You well? We're Excellent. good. We're obsessed with uh, your library, which is absolutely huge. But also, you were listening in on the conversation about no kids under two having yeah. screens. Yeah, when they, when they said no TV before two, I thought you meant two o'clock. Um, <laughs> And I was thinking to myself, yeah, then you can just have a late lunch, right? And they can they can watch telly. Listen, I, I agree with what she's saying, and it is, I'm sure, lazy parenting. But also what she said presupposes that that some parents are, are, can be more enlightening than, mm -hmm. than a really good TV show that's been designed for kids. You know, that's showing them lions and tigers and elephants. I can't do that at home Absolutely. without the TV. I haven't got them handy. I mean, I can show them books. And... and you know, some things are, are, I think, really stimulating for them. I've noticed that I've got a new, a brand new two-year-old. And during lockdown, I, I'm going to tell you, I don't know what I'd have done without television, you know? Here, here. I'm with you yeah, on show that me kids, as well. Show me parents who deny their kids' devices 
I'll show you some parents who aren't eating a decent lunch. <laughs> <laughs> or enjoying, enjoying the simple things like we're, pizza and Kentucky Fried Chicken. We're 30 chicken. seconds uh, in and he's mentioned lunch twice. I, I think know, it could exactly. be his favourite meal of the well, day. I mean, he did the show The Big <laughs> yeah. Breakfast, but it was all about lunch. It's my first break of the day. You know? <laughs> That's what it is. Listen, we have to talk about your podcast, though, The Alien Kidnap Club. Kidnap Club. I mean, yeah. Tell us, well, tell us, tell us where the idea came from, because there's a lot of podcasts about at the moment. You're a busy man, as it is, on the radio six days a week. So why yeah. are you going to podcasts, and particularly about aliens? Um, I, I had quite an interesting experience happen to me. There's two things. I had an interesting experience happen to me. I noticed the, the incredible interest in aliens and life being out there and just how much of the, the sort of documentary channel block is devoted to that and discussion of that. And uh, so I was sort of thinking, people are really interested in this. I'm really interested in this. You, it, it's one of those arguments you can get into um, a lot. Uh, and, and I suddenly thought, well, I had a weird experience and I'm not lying, you know? I know I'm not lying. Uh, I had two other friends in the car who witnessed the same extraordinary incident with me and we're not lying. And so I started looking at these people on these, on these sort of alien documentary programs and, and going to uh, kind of web, their websites and thinking, well, let's suppose they're not all lying, that they, they think they're, at least this is, this is their truth. Let's, let's, let's talk to them and, you know, pick them up on small details, but let's not be totally sceptical mm. at the start, you know. What is your strange experience, yeah, Danny? Us. Oh, my strange experience you yes. want to hear about. Yes, yes please. <laughs> well, <And the> truth. <laughs> Tell us the truth. OK, well, it was really strange. I was coming back from... Um, sorry, it, I very rarely do these. Do I look like an egg or a thumb? <laughs> sorry, I was just looking at myself on the screen and I was suddenly thinking, I look like an egg or a thumb. But no. I was going to go up to it, but no, it's not quite... It, no, go on, no, tell us. Tell us your alien story and okay, we'll, okay. we'll forget about so, your thumb. No, I just was Sunday. It's very rare I see, but when you cut to me, I can see myself. And I started thinking, yeah, I'm like a sort of a sort of bobbling thumb. <laughs> um, anyway, I was uh, I was driving back from. Well, I wasn't driving. I was in a car coming back from a, a, an away game down the M1, or yeah, I think it was down the M1. And um, a friend of mine was driving. I was in the passenger seat, and two men shorter than us were in the back, uh, like short. So that's the way. Of, that's what happens. Short guys go in the back, <laughs> and. One of the short guys was asleep, and I, I was just, we were just, you know, kind of when you, when traffic's really annoying and the motorways, there's been a spillage or something or a lorry, and, and we were just, you know, you know, just going along really slowly in traffic, and I was just looking out the side window, and I, I, I saw this kind of, this, this bright light that seemed to be hovering, about the size of like a, a, a dustbin lid, um, yeah, about... About, what, about half a metre across in diameter. And it was just kind of hovering and sort of moving. This, this kind of dish of light was sort of moving. And it had really bright light emanating from it. It, it almost seemed to be like being, being supported by light from the ground. But then it had light all around it as well. And then it, it sort of it moved like this, sort of moving, like really... <laughs> it, was, it was strange. It was like, you know when you see things in those water parks that are supported by water, like on a jet yeah. of water? It's kind of like, yes, that's a good, that's a good, it was kind of like that, but with light. Anyway, it sort of did that for about, I don't know, a minute, just going around, because we were just stationary. I was looking at maybe 30 seconds, you know, these things can seem longer. And then, poof, it just shot off into space, like the fastest <laughs> thing I have ever seen in my... I've never seen anything move so quickly. It was insane. And I turned to, I turned to my friend Ben, who was driving, I just said... I, I, at this point, I can, I can tell you now, the language was a little bit stronger than, than, than what I'm going to use now. Yes. Uh, but I said, what the flip was that? And he said, I don't, I don't flipping know. Um, what the flip was that? Not, we're just going, what the, what the flip? Not a drone. And we were just freaked out. And then my mate Mick has poked his head between the seats and he's just gone... What a flip! <laughs> and 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 it was, it was insane. And, and the three of us for a while didn't talk about it, you know, too much. It, it, on the podcast, there's a there's a bonus where um, I talked to my friend Ben, who now lives in in, in America, and he 
uh, a chap much like this. Although I couldn't see myself as, you know, thumb like this. It was just a little picture. And, and we discussed it. And it was, we haven't discussed it. I'm not kidding. For 20 years. And his account was exactly the same as mine. It was quite, it was quite gratifying. I got him on the phone. We spoke about it. He moved there years ago. And, you know, I speak to him occasionally, but not about that. And, and I, all I'd said to him on the phone is, can we talk about that thing? And my producer it's, it's, was like, wow. I find it really interesting because everyone here in studio, I think we're all going, it was a drone, Johnny, but then you said this is 20 years ago before kind of we had that no, sort of... No, 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 this, wasn't, this was light and it was it's much too fast. I know the difference. It was right by the car. It was about um, six foot from the car. I presume, yeah. I, and here's the funny thing, right? Here's the funny thing. Whatever the experience was, it was an alien experience. It was not of this earth. It was outside my experience. So you could call that metaphysical. But there's a paradox here. There's a paradox. And, and, and the contradiction... That, that makes sense in this case, what's paradoxical, is that you speak to most people and they will say, do you believe there is alien life somewhere out there? And most people, if they're quite sane, will say, yes, yeah. I do believe that out there somewhere there is alien life. But as soon as someone says, I've got proof, we're like, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, we, we, believe, we believe everything about... We believe in aliens right until someone has an encounter with one, you know? Yeah. And... and, and the only parallel I can I, I sort of have with that is is almost religious, mm -hmm. where people people can believe in God or a higher being until someone says they've had a conversation with Jesus, and then we're like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, you know? And, or I met I talked to angels, and and, and then suddenly we're really sceptical, and yet loads of people believe in in God and, and a higher power until you actually encounter it, and then we're like, he was drunk, he was on drugs, he was. It must have been, it was probably lightning. It must have been a drone. It was probably the shadow off a building. Uh, it was a statue in the background. You know, suddenly we've got all these, these reasons. But, but what I know what I saw, and what the lads did as well, and the six people I interview in this show, they all know what they saw. I and... and and the go. thing is, and I'm, yeah. no, I'm not lying. You for know, people so, in the first episode, you talk to someone who met his future self and chose his mother. It is honestly fascinating. The podcast is called Alien Kidnap <laughs> Club. We basically got to talk about yeah. kids' TV and aliens and nothing else. We were meant to chat to you about, you know, Elvis breakfast. Costello, the I big so breakfast, yeah. every, your books, all your awards. Listen, Johnny, I'm afraid we I have to leave it there. Can't, can't I get a weekly spot? You I can, like can of course. Especially when you tried to curse there. If you, you, need, to, if you, you need a London correspondent <laughs> who's just going to... I can just tell you what's kind of going on. Flipping London. right, we will. You yes. went into an Irish... I, I, I love the gig. You went into an Irish accent when you said, what flipping happened? Didn't you? You did do yeah. that, Half actually. flip, we've run right, out yeah. of time. <laughs> uh, uh, his name yeah. is Vaughan. Uh, Johnny Vaughan, listen. Yeah, I've got... Fun enough, I've got relatives in, in Bally Vaughan. Um... My father went there a while ago and, uh, and he introduced himself to a guy in a graveyard while he was looking for Vaughan Graves. And uh, the guy said, he said, my name's Vaughan, you know. And the graveyard guy just said, yes, that was mine. <laughs> and so are all these. And it, and it turns out it was... It was nothing special in a place like Valley Vaughan. There you go. <laughs> Not to worry. You'll see a few in Valley Vaughan, all right. Johnny Vaughan, <laughs> yeah. next time you're in Ireland. It's lovely to talk to you and, uh, and, and I shall speak to you soon. Live, Do. Live, live long and prosper. Love Absolutely. it. We'll Love talk it. to you soon. Thank you, Johnny. Johnny we are of course, you take care, guys. Take the care. podcast, <laughs> if you didn't get enough of it about there, the Alien Kidnap Club, it is available. The first episode is out now. And, uh, <sighs> yeah, that makes me want to chat about it, but I can imagine how long it must be. I mean, <laughs> no, it's only 30. It's only took about 30 minutes. Uh, enjoy Great. that. Now, it's still to come this morning from Flirty Florals to Bright Bowls. We've got Occasion Wear on the catwalk. Plus, we're going to be talking about movies. We'll see you after the short break. <laughs> insurance, van insurance, or home insurance. Call the quote devil. Unless, of course, you've got money to burn. Yes, thank you very much, Sure, We've had a fantastic morning with all our little piggies down here at my lovely pig rescue in County Kildare. And don't forget, tomorrow morning, we are coming to you live from Ballymun. We have a sustainable morning on the way. So that's all to come from North County Dublin, Ballymun, tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Anyway, a final look at weather, and it's a dry and dull start here in County Kildare. Good deal of patchy mist and drizzle trailing around now in those moderate to locally fresh southwesterly winds. Now, right across the day, very 
very limited ones again, very similar to yesterday. Uh, not much sunshine out there. The best of dryness, the best of brightness in across southeastern southern regions. Elsewhere, rain moving into western areas by late evening, uh, sweeping once again across the country. Top temps of 11 to 14 degrees. And finally then tonight, it looks like another wet, another windy one to start. In fact, those winds reaching gale force for those Atlantic coastal counties. Improving, though, into tomorrow morning with overnight lows back to 7 to 11 degrees. So for me and Owen here on cameras, that is your final weather update from my lovely pig rescue down here in County Kildare. For first-time drivers, young drivers, returning drivers, if you've had an open claim or have had too many penalty points. The quote devil's always got one hell of a quote. It is fashion time with Rob Condon. And Rob, today we are doing occasion wear. Yes, we're taking a look at occasion wear. Lots of confirmations, communions coming up, even weddings, that, and it can be a kind of awkward one to get the right outfit for. So we're going to take a look at that well, this let's morning. Let's get started. Yes. Danny, yeah. first up. Danny is with us first. And if you're someone that doesn't want to go for a dress, but you still want to look really dressy for this oh. special occasion, I think this is a perfect look here on Danny. We're seeing lots of bow block brights at the moment. And this is just a really vivid color that's going to bring you in to spring summer um, and you can definitely mix and match it first up we have the shirt so it's a really oversized shirt we've tied it at the waist here it does go as long as you can see at the back here so if you do want more coverage on it you could go longer with it it's also going to go with jeans and um, this whole look here is available from Lalara Boutique at Manor Mill Shopping Centre as all so the clothes So it's a shirt are. and skirt. Trousers. Trousers. Yes. trousers. So it's a two-piece combination. It comes okay. in a few different colours. Give us a kick, see Danny. Let's see the, let's the, see the trousers. trousers of it. Yes. They're really great um, fit and flair to these trousers. And as well, with those trousers, if you didn't want to go with the blue on top, you could go with a simpler white shirt with it. I think it's also a great piece that you're going to be able to bring into your summer wardrobe, going away on holidays, easy to fold up in the suitcase, a perfect piece. I think it's so good. Kate Blanchett recently wore a shirt and like it was a skirt as well. On, yeah. on the, it was similar to this on uh, the red carpet and it just looked so good. I really did think it was very stylish. So everything you've done here is so good. Yes, and shoes. then with the shoes here, um, they're available from Paul Byron. Really great pair of gold pointed sling back heels that are going to go with lots of different things in your wardrobe. And I think with this colour um, blue, you want to go with kind of gold accessories. And that's what we've done with the jewellery here, mixing it in with blue and gold with the bag there. You can see the gold detail into the yeah. bag. It's a clutch bag, it's a leather. It does have a strap, so if you wanted to wear it across body bag, yeah. you definitely could as well. The necklace and the bracelet. Then we have the bracelet there at 40 euro. Um, We've got the necklace. Daddy's the like, necklace. where am I supposed to be hand? Where is it? <laughs> um, and then we're moving on to the necklace there. So we've gone with a drop necklace there. You can see the black bow blues, gold detail, and the beading to the end of the necklace, which we've also brought that beading back in, in the earrings. So kind of a boho vibe with that necklace. Yeah, and the and earrings I think catching it, just works. it really lovely yeah, as well. Yeah, really well Gorgeous. with it, that beaded detail on the earrings. Danny, yeah, we'll know where to Danny. go with the next outfit. I swear to God, we'll have it in time. Thank you so much. That is beautiful. We're going to move on to outfit number two with yes. Blonnet today. Blonnet. And we've gone with a blazer dress combo here. So a lot of the time, people can kind of say, what, what are they going to wear over a dress if it's going to an occasion? And a blazer is definitely the answer to that. This is a blazer with a waistcoat. Yes, it is. Well, it's a faux waistcoat. So it just as the impression of the waistcoat there. This look is available from Sorrento Boutique, but I love this blazer. It's oversized. It's a long length to it, so it's going to go great with a dress. It's given that kind of masculine tailoring, but because of the feminine print underneath it, it's just looking really chic and sophisticated. You can see the faux pocket detail and the faux waistcoat, which also has pocket detail to it there. This blazer is going to go great with a pair of denim jeans, a logo t-shirt, but also a dress like this. Let's check out this dress. Yes. Fabulous. Slip dress. Um, a slip dress, really great prints. You can see the lilacs, rust tones to it, split detail to it, drawstring to the side of it there. Really great length to this. I think that's important with occasions like confirmations, communions. You want to go a little bit more Kate Middleton with your hemline than Kim Kardashian. Do you know what I mean? If you're going to a <laughs> confirmation <laughs> or a communion. You're showing off. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. And it's um, sleeveless, is it? It is. It's sleeveless, the dress there. Um, and really great pair of shoes then as well. So bringing in those brown tones, they're a guest shoe from Divine Boutique. Gorgeous. And then for the earrings then with and the sunglasses, what? Earrings, we've gone with a really statement pair. You can see the dual tone detail to them. They're a hoop earring, but a really statement piece to add to this. Um, and then we've gone with a really oversized kind of Victoria Beckham style inspired sunglasses there. You can see the gold detail to the side of them as well. 
what just finishes off the look perfectly. Great look. Thank yes. you so oh, much, Bonnet. Yeah. It's fabulous. Jeez, Karina's got a lot of work. I've liked both of those yeah. now. What have you done to Karina? <laughs> Karina's gone all oh, colourful with fabulous. this look. Fabulous. <laughs> uh, we've gone again back to bow block brights, which we're seeing so much of at the moment. Purple is the key colour for spring, summer, and I just love this dress. For any occasion, confirmations, communions, even a wedding you could bring this to. Um, this is available from Carrie Dunn. You can see the V-neck line to it. You can see the asymmetrical waistline to it. And it's all about that fit and flare. Two slit details to it. So the slip underneath it goes kind of to the knee of it. And then you've got that sheer detail. And we're seeing so much sheer detail. The sleeves, they're a bellowing sleeve. Again, matching in with that sheer. And what we love at the back, an elasticated waistline. The shoes. The shoes then with this, we've gone with a pointed nude shoe here. They're gonna go with anything in your wardrobe, but you could go with a strappy sandal with this. You could also bring a bold block bride if you wanted to, um, to work in with this look. But a perfect pair of shoes to finish off the dress. Gorgeous, and all the girls can't be bothered looking at us this morning. Yeah, I got the sunglasses on again. We're expecting very good weather. <laughs> yeah, we, are. we are, you can't go to any occasion without too. your sunglasses. <laughs> um, oh. Really, again, we've gone with oversized sunglasses. At the moment, it's all about oversized sunglasses. Um, and they're available from Carrie Dunn. And then with the earrings finishing off, we've gone with another statement drop earring there. Again, bringing in gold and stone detailing to this look. But again, the blazer we just saw could go over yeah. this. Or even your, if you're wearing it at the moment, you could definitely go with a coat. Thank Absolutely. you, Karina. Karina, that's that. beautiful. Danny's done a quick change. Danny has done a quick change, and we've no sunglasses with this look, oh, but we nice. have a statement dress here. Wow. Um, one shoulder dresses are everywhere this season, and this is a beautiful dress. It's available from Divine Boutique. It's all about that shoulder detail. You can see that kind of 80s puff style to the side of this the ruche into it. It's just a really statement dress. What I love about it as well, the length to it, we were talking hemlines there a few minutes ago. It's just got a great length for an occasion. Now, it's really classy. It is. It's yeah. really it's really cool. It's chic and classy. Now, obviously, for the church, you could put a light knitwear over this or a blazer um, okay. to cover yeah. yourself up a little yeah. bit and then for the photographs, take it off and show off the dress. These shoes are great. great yeah, gorgeous pair of shoes. So we've kept it nude shoes. I think it goes really well with this. You could go with kind of that turquoise colour as well in a shoe if you wanted to. But then we've got the kind of woven front to these strappy sandal and um, a really statement pair of heels nice. there. went va boom with the earrings yeah, on Danny. Another statement earring. So I think with this neckline, you don't want to go with a necklace because it's doing enough yeah. with the sleeve detail to it. So I'd go with a statement earring. And these are all about that pearl detail, which we're also seeing so much of for this season. Oh, it's very nice. It's a so great outfit. Yeah. Danny, I don't know how you yeah, ever have any money because I'm like, buy everything that she ever wears. <laughs> that is beautiful. Thank you. Thank Rob. you. And they're all available at Manor Mill Shopping Centre in Manoop. Thank you so much, Thank you. Rob. Yes, Thanks a million. Out there. Now, up next, Brian Lloyd will be reviewing the highly anticipated season two of Jeremy Clarkson's Farm. Talk oh, to you shortly. Wait. You're very excited. Well, Welcome back. It's time to talk about some of the more divisive movies and shows out this week with Brian Lloyd. Yes, it is. First up, Marvel Studios. They've just kicked off phase five of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's been going forever with Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Let's take a look. You're an interesting man, Scott Lang. You're an Avenger. You have a daughter, but you've lost a lot of time, like me. We can help each other with that. Yeah. Who are you? I'm the man who can give you the one thing you want. What's that? Time. Oh, it's going to be bomb. just uh, Love. what we want is no more Marvel <laughs> movies. <laughs> hey! Yes. So Marvel started 2008. We've uh -huh. got Iron Man, and now we're all the way up to 2023, phase five, and mm -hmm. they've got eight phases plotted out. Yes, and this is the 32nd or 31st Marvel no. property. Oh There's been God. that many. Okay, yeah. and how good is it? Not great, to be honest. Not great. You can really see that, like, it's starting to show its age, no pun intended. Like, Paul Rudd, you watch this, and, like, he just seems so checked out. He just really is just, there's nothing going on there. And I can see why, because, like, when you know, Paul Rudd's best qualities are improv. That's mm -hmm. him in a room with a load of people riffing, making jokes. You look at Anchorman. 
I you love Paul Rudd. Like, yeah, me he's too. He's so funny, he's so good. He's so funny, he's so affable. But even you could tell in Infinity War, when they're all in that room, mm. they were joking. Oh, like, yeah, they were that's all it. together. This they is were, green screen. This is all green screen and blue screen and volume and all the rest of it. And the entire film is him basically separated from uh, Evangeline Lilly, Michelle Pfeiffer, and Michael Douglas. They're sent to the quantum realm. He goes in after his daughter, played by Catherine Newton. The two of them are on this adventure. So it's literally just him and Catherine Newton running around the place, getting into all let's, kind of... Let's move on from it. How, how many stars two did you out of five. Two out of five. Two out of five. Yeah, it's, it's, okay. it's poor. It's well, poor. That's the worst rating I think Marvel has it's ever the gotten. Second, yeah, on Rotten Tomatoes, it's now at like 53%, and that's like the second lowest of a Marvel film. The lowest okay. was Eternals. And oddly enough, I kind of preferred Eternals to this, because at least Eternals... <laughs> no, but Eternals was trying to do something different. Yeah. This is just more of the same. What about this one then? So Marcel the Shell with shoes on. What is, what, yeah. What's this all about? So this is really weird, but really, really fun and very, very cute. Cute. Um, so it's essentially based on these uh, series of YouTube videos about this uh, talking shell voiced by Jenny Slate, who is this kind of like childlike creature. Um, this uh, documentary filmmaker rents an Airbnb, finds the shell called Marcel. Um, uh, her and, or sorry, uh, Marcel and its granny, voiced by Isabella Rossellini, of all people, <laughs> are living in the house. And then he just basically records them going about their lives. It's so damn disgustingly cute. It is very, very hard to watch could this. Could I and take my five, six-year-old You could. Now, this is the thing. You could totally take a five or six-year-old and they would enjoy the hell out of this. They'd love it. It's okay. so cute. It's so funny. But it's very profound. It's actually very, very sad. Like, oh. no, I say in sad. In a good way. In a good way. Like, in a good oh. way. In a very kind of like, it kind of creeps up on you. And then when it hits you, you're like, <gasps> But brilliant, really, really good. And totally a five-year-old could watch this and wouldn't be scared, wouldn't be anything about okay. it. Or you could watch it on your own as a sort of like indie animated kind of thing. Worth and watch. Any of the, the ones I've watched on YouTube, I loved it so yeah. much. I think that the trailer is gorgeous. I'm yeah. really looking forward to it. What are you going to give Marcel? Four out of five. Four! Oh, for the whole what? family. For the whole family. Oh, that's a day. That's a day for me and the daughter to the cinema. That's, that's it. very I, cute. I, I, okay. it's, it's very cute. Like, it's very... It's one of those films I think that kids would really imprint on it. And okay. I think... It's going to be a, a core memory for them, yeah. Lovely. OK, let's move on. Picard, season three. Yeah, so the third... Se this is the final season What is of... Picard, sorry? <laughs> OK, so... <do> you... <laughs> <laughs> The right? disgust from okay. behind the camera. Oh, so it's Star Anthony Trek. looked at you really like dirty Sorry. look, and Derek Sorry. is incredibly Just upset. You like you are so, just couldn't Star have. Trek Picard. Okay, yes. Star Trek, and there's a uh, Patrick, whatever you call this back as well. Patrick Stewart. Patrick Stewart. Yeah. So he is the he was the captain of the Enterprise. He's now retired. Now he's an admiral. And um, so this is him getting the band back together. So it's the original cast of the Next Generation. That means. Worf, Dr. Crusher, Deanna Troy, Commander Riker, um, Lore is back in there as well. Data? Data, well, no, Data died in... Mm. Oh, Spoiler sorry, spark, yeah, spark. sorry, sorry, yeah, he um, did, yeah. But, yeah, and LaForge is in there as well. And LaForge is uh, on screen... Or, sorry, LaForge's daughter in it is played by his, on, his real, real life, life daughter, daughter as well, so it's very, very cute. Um, I think, look, I loved Star Trek. I think this is obviously... Me, one... I did, I loved it back in the day as well, did actually. You? Yeah, loved it, yeah. But you didn't know what the Picard But I didn't know Picard. There's, uh, Marvel, Star Wars, it's, it's all, all kind of one now, isn't to it? me now, yeah. Yeah, and that's fair, yeah. But no, this is really, really good. I really, really enjoyed this. It is essentially like the last season of The Next Generation. Like, it's their final time on screen together. It is. Like, they're pretty much writing this, like, and drawing a line underneath it. And they have it. to. They have to. I mean, they're all kind of getting on in their years and yeah. all the rest of it. And I think, like, they can only do... They can only get the band back together one more time before mm. it becomes a little bit kind yeah. of rote and dry. And Patrick Stewart, he is enjoying himself as he he's is. doing this, which is great to see. Absolutely, yeah. Of what are you going to... What, of what like, you've seen. Like, from what I've seen, like, three and a half, four out of five. Like, it's, look, I think if you loved... I think if you loved The Next Generation, if you loved Star Trek, this is the one to watch. Even if you didn't see the first two seasons of Picard, they were they were yeah. not great. You can come in on this and you can enjoy it. You don't well, need to have seen the first two seasons. That's good to that's hear. Good. That's good to hear. Um, Clarkson's Farm is back for season two. Hmm. Yeah. Right. Did I'm you not... enjoy season one? I did. Despite myself, I enjoyed it. Despite myself, I enjoyed it. I went in very much kind of like head up. What like... is the premise of Clarkson's Farm? So if you haven't seen Clarkson's Farm before, it's essentially Jeremy Clarkson of Top Gear and now the Grand Tour. He bought a farm. Uh, the first uh, season was him basically. He bought the farm 
then the pandemic happened. So it was him basically, he had nothing else going on. He couldn't travel, he couldn't do anything else. So he just devoted all his time into the farm, getting it up and running. A lot of kind of misadventures, but there was a kind of a warmth to it. You know, that sort of, you saw a side to him that you didn't normally see, you yeah. know? My wife loved it. And, Me and too. Uh, like, listen, nobody condones the article that he wrote about Meghan Markle. That's and he the can thing. be an arse, and he's always played yes. off that. But at the same time, this has done more for farming and for mm. farmers to raise awareness on how difficult it is. It is than no, any farming program. Before. It is like I remember, like the last season of the the last episode of the first season, rather when he talks of when he's doing up the mats for the for the whole farm, and he I think he came out with like ten pounds or something yeah. like that. Yeah, for a whole year. For a yeah. whole year, and he's just like, I how do farmers do this? How do farmers manage this? Like this is insane. How do they manage? Um, I'm not going to watch this. I'm just not. Oh, um, really? No, I'm not. Because, like, I mean, I'm not going to condone him, what he wrote and what he did. I mean, like, look, if you want to watch it, great. Go ahead and watch it. Mm. Uh, I haven't watched it. I'm not planning on watching it. Yeah. Um, You've taken a stance. And, and, and it like, was an I, abhorrent article. Yeah, it was. It was absolutely disgraceful. And this is the thing. Like, I mean, you know, for a guy that is trying to kind of show a different side of himself, to kind of, then kind of show his arse by writing an article like that, I think is just reprehensible. Yeah. But, look, people want to watch it, go ahead. I mean... Amazon, were, there was talk of Amazon dropping the whole series yeah. altogether. It, that's how serious yeah. this was. But they obviously went ahead with it. That's their decision. If people want to watch yeah. it, that's their decision. I haven't yeah. watched it. I'm not going to watch this it. This is an okay. article where he said he called for Meghan Markle to be walked naked to the streets. I would apologise for I, I agree, still. just giving people context. Like, I mean, come on now. Anyway, like, I mean, it's, absolutely. Listen, we must watch stop. it if you wish. Brian Lloyd, thank you so much thank from you. entertainment.ie. Um, that is <laughs> in from us this week, but tomorrow morning, the guys, of course, will be here with loads of fantastic they guests. They sure will. Have a great day. We shall see you the start of next week. Yes. All the best. Bye.